Yo, how's it going, guys? Christian Loza here with How It's Done Podcast, and I'm here with the one and only Big Mike. How's it going, man? I'm good, man. Blessed to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, dude. So for those watching out there that don't know, tell us what you do. I mean, it kind of just depends on how you want to look at it. You know, I mean, I'm an automotive enthusiast. Yeah. I'm a car guy through and through, you know, ranging from just a, a good classic enthusiast on the on the level of the culture and street scene and all the way up to uh, now being blessed to do uh, uh, television and, uh, you know, SEMA and, um, you know, various uh, media outlets. You know, I freelance for uh, p uh, print and digital publications build cars uh you know design and help build cars for other people um collaborations um television builds and um you know kind of have my hands in a variety of pots i mc i judge car shows all over the world and it's uh it's very uh it's very cool to be able to go from uh you know driving the meets yeah. and uh you know forums and all kinds of stuff like that all the way to uh uh, big time, you know, mainstream stuff. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's kind of what I do, man. Cool, cool, man. So, how did you first get in the cars? Uh, it's an interesting question. I mean, if uh, if I go back far enough, you know, I was a I was a kid, you know, and uh, I hung out with an older crowd, and um, they just so happened to have a lot of uh, really cool imports. So, I mean, here in Southern California. Uh, I would uh, go to a house party or, or maybe school or whatever and see a guy's older brother or something come pick him up and th there would be cars like, uh, you know, uh, Mark IV Supras and uh, FDR X7s and um, Civics Integras, Acura Legends, I mean just all kinds of stuff. And so that's uh, kind of what got me into that particular type of car and I liked Hondas. I kind of um, got into that. and. Um, and then I focused on that and, and I just started building Hondas. That's cool, man. Yeah. Um, so you've been in the car scene for a long time now. How would you compare the scene now to when it when you first started out? You know, that's um, it's kind of a, a matter of perspective. I mean, in some ways, it's no different. Yeah. You have, uh, you know, kids that are getting into it and then you have a, a little bit of older guys and then you have guys that have been into it longer than everyone else. Um, so even, you know, 20 years ago, there were guys that had been in it for however many years and they were older than us. And uh, before them, you know, at some point they looked up to people. So I think in many ways, it's not, um, it's not very different in that sense. You have a younger demographic that doesn't have quite so much money. And yeah. They comprise the majority, especially in, let's say, uh, you know, a subcategory of the import world, Hondas, Japanese cars, right? So uh, they comprise the majority and you have the cars that are built uh, very clearly yeah. with a budget. Um, and then you have, you know, the more like it, it, the middle class and you have some, you know, people are taking the time to actually save up and, and buy real parts and nicer things. And then you have the upper echelon, right? People yeah. who are, they've got really extreme uh, ideas at least based on what's popular at the time they have the money and the patience and the maturity to execute such things whether by their own hands or uh, they're able to uh, utilize a network and they have the resources to have it made for them you know and it was kind of it was kind of like that I mean if you go back far enough uh, there 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 wasn't anything to to buy yeah. somebody had to make that somebody yeah. had to come up with the idea of putting a turbocharger on a Honda yeah. motor somebody had to come up with the idea of well I, nobody makes it so I'm gonna just weld this myself right you know? yeah so it depends on how far back you want to go um, I was you know I was um, uh, kind of one of those you know I didn't know how to do anything when I was younger I was just a kid who wanted to get into it so you had to pay somebody right, right absolutely or if you try it yourself you're gonna break something <laughs> yeah uh, because you know there were no YouTube tutorials there wasn't really anyone to teach you so you just kind of sort of did it and you would probably mess something up right and uh, that's how you learn though you know yeah people so, have it easy now with like YouTube and stuff sure sure I mean the technology um, is is pretty intense you know you can grab your phone you don't even have to sit down you can just grab <laughs> your phone and and uh, look it up real quick I mean I do it all the time if I don't know something or whatever car related or otherwise you just look it up yeah you just look it up it's so, like it's all at our fingertips it's all <laughs> right there yeah man yeah. yeah so dude tell us about your fourth gen 1992 Honda Prelude how did it, it, it all start and get to where it is today yeah it's funny man it's funny because a lot of people um, in our world they uh, 
they kind of presume that that's what I am, a quote unquote prelude guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I get that, but at the same time, it's just an indication of maybe how long they've been in the scene. Yeah. Um, my prelude is one of like eight cars that I've built. Um, I haven't really put much focus into other ones. My very first car was a 93 Civic Si hatchback, and that was actually in Honda Tuning Magazine in yeah. 2005. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, everyone sort of, uh, you know, and understandably so, everyone uh, kind of knows me as the prelude guy because I, I've always liked preludes. I mean, uh, when I saw guys driving around in preludes, just like Legends and DAs and EFs and CRXs or whatever, it was one of those cars that I was like, wow. And it's nice, yeah. you know? And then the electroluminescent gauges, you know, the long dash and, and uh, you know, it had leather seating options and, you know, the biggest, you know, the big boy 2.2 liter H22 and, and all these types of things. And, and I just thought it was a really nice car, but you know, back then I couldn't afford it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I uh, got older and, you know, you, you progress as an individual career wise, professionally, et cetera, you have more monetary resources and, um, you know, I did a bunch of cars and I ended up finding a prelude from a friend for a good deal. And it just like my coupe and my hatchback and all these other cars I've had or had at the time, I just started modifying, yeah. it, you know, and it just so happened that um, it made it to a uh, uh, Honda tuning the cover yeah, in 2008. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more. You oh. keep going. I'm just going to mention yeah, that. But no, yeah, that's no. a big milestone. Man. Yeah, man. I mean, that's just, um, you know, that's just kind of what it was, you know, like I, I, I've developed and as we all grow as people, you know, I would like to believe that everyone wants to continue growing and, and developing their style. Yeah. So it just kind of happened where I would grow uh, and evolve and, and want this particular item or that particular item, or I wanted to look a certain way. And, and I did that. And, you know, it, apparently uh, the industry or the, the, the culture, the scene, whatever terminology is applicable to the person, uh, they like it too. Yeah. You know, when you do a car, when you do whatever you do, you just have to do what you want. Yeah. And what you think is cool. And if other people like it, cool. And if other people don't, you have to be okay with yeah, that. Yeah, because it's, it's your creation. It's not anybody else's. Yeah. yeah, so I feel very blessed that, incidentally, what I liked, other people liked mm-hmm. um, enough to want to feature it. Yeah. And then not just feature it, but to uh, put it on the cover Absolutely. of Honda Tuning. Twice, right? Uh, well, 2008, 2012, and uh, 2017, which, you know, obviously there's an evolution of the names of the magazine. So yeah. 2017 is... Honda tuning to Super Street. To yeah. Super Street, but I've been on the cover of Bonsai Magazine in the UK uh, twice. Wow. Um, and, um, you know, it's it's international, you know? So, yeah. I mean, uh, after 2008, I, um, I've only been on the covers. That's which awesome. Which is pretty crazy. That's, that's awesome. Uh, I believe... Uh, and that mag- speaks like high volumes too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I uh, was in... I was a feature in a, a Japanese magazine. But everything US and UK since 2011... Oh, wow. ...has been covers. That's awesome, man. So I'm, I'm... How many covers total do you have now? Six. Oh, okay. Wow. I'm sure you have them all like hanging up and framed and everything. You know, the or? first three, I think I do have all the plaques. Yeah. But to be honest with you, man, it gets... It's a little bit expensive. <laughs> yeah. Each one of those, you know, because the the I've been blessed to have fairly lengthy features. Yeah. So they're not singular plaques. Yeah. Each one's like, like two, multiple even ones, two and a half yeah. or three plaques per feature because it's seven to eleven pages. Yeah, sometimes. that's insane. So, um, you know, that's a good three hundred something bucks. Yeah. Times six. Yeah, I'd rather use that money for something else. <laughs> yeah. But um. Yeah, man, I'm behind those, com- you know, those plaque companies, you know how they contact you? Yeah, the, it's like In The News that they, in for the, Honda Tuning. Yeah, right? yeah, so In The News is a company that's been around a long time. And then uh, there's another one that I've used before. I think it, they're both out on the East Coast. Um, and uh, I like their quality. Yeah. And it's cool. There's other ways to do it, but... Um, uh, I I actually do want one of every color. Yeah. To Dude, it isn't out. it crazy how those companies? I mean, the way that I did it when I got on Honda Tuning was they they just like send it to you and then they're like, if you like it, like pay for it. That's how they did it with me. Yeah, they don't like, do that anymore. Yeah, because I bet you some people like screwed them over. Or sure, something. but I mean, if 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 enough people say, oh, I like this, but I don't want to pay that much. Yeah, and they send it back, then those people are cranking right. them out for nothing. Right. So maybe they or s- they might get the idea that like they're charging too much or something. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. For all I know, those companies still do it that way for some. Uh, for me, they call me yeah. and they're like, do you want it? 
um, and I say at this time no or at this time how about this this can you get that and they'll be like well I didn't do my last one and they'll be like okay well, well we like do, a good deal or you something know, we yeah. do have that and I'm like alright well last time I think I ordered two at one time I think one time I've ordered uh, one and then one for a friend's magazine yeah. so um, it would be very cool to have you, all they six. do those really good too, oh yeah, yeah it's yeah. like top no I mean you know I like it man they're really nice to have up on the walls in the house or whatever um, so yeah I'm definitely gonna just you know allocate some resources to uh, buying yeah, the last you, three you, or four you got it man it's like yeah. a must yeah it's pretty cool yeah man. so dude uh, it's it, it's most known for its various stages your prelude which has been your favorite to date and why uh, you know what? As as kind of interesting of an answer as this is, the truth is, is each one has been my favorite at yeah. the time. Um, at the time, that was the essentially the height of my creativity. Yeah. At the time, that was what I thought was the coolest and looked the best or whatever. So every car that I've built for what it was when it was was my favorite. Car. Yeah. Every car that I've had. Yeah, and you've always like you've. I'm sure like for your personal goals you've always just like tried to one up each stage or whatever yeah every every phase of the car or cars that i've had has been my favorite but you know when you have a magazine um and then like let's say forums and then social media and people are commenting telling you how it is their favorite personal favorite honda build or import build or they love it or whatever you know it, you know for me i see the flaws yeah and all i want to do is grow and progress so uh yeah there is a level of uh one upmanship yeah i want to one up myself and do something better so yeah uh, i always want to make it better and uh some people have said some very nice things you know over the years they're like how could you take something that uh, the majority of the industry considers to be perfect and tear it apart and i'm like well because it was never perfect to right me. yeah and I, I now have other ideas and you know a lot of people have also said why didn't you just buy other chassis you know what i probably could have maybe even should have but for me it's like this is my car yeah and i just want to keep the same canvas yeah. do, do you get a, a, that a lot from people like why didn't you just keep it as is and just do something yeah. else you oh yeah every time lot. yeah every time yeah and then and, and your reason for that is like a good reason man well i appreciate that you know yeah. um this this last version uh is essentially it mm -hmm. um i kind of liken it to an apple ios this like this is version three of my car so this is like 3.1.1 yeah right and as i change you know maybe a wheel and tire package you know to get a different contact patch or play with offsets 3.1.2 yeah if i try different brake pads 3.1.3 yeah, yeah, you know yeah. but it's never going to be completely and utterly torn apart again color change and all that stuff i don't intend to do that with this chassis there are other things it's on to bigger and better things you know building other people's cars clients cars yeah helping them design stuff so my personal car is is a fun project car but it's not my focal point at this particular time yeah so um i know we were we were talking briefly about like honda tuning magazine um when you were you were when you were on the cover of uh of uh i think it was like the october 2012 issue um uh, when uh what, what did that like uh, that, I thought that was like really cool because we, we uh, Joey Lee uh, sh shot the photos and it was like written by Rod Rez, yeah. which, are, which are two major icons in the community. Uh, tell us about like you know what that feature meant to you and like tell us like your relationship with them. I know they're like really big big icons and like I mean so are you. So it was kind of cool that you guys three were like a part of that feature. Uh, and you're talking about which feature? The one where you were, uh, I think it was like October 2012 where you were like sitting on your car. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah. So that's actually a really, really cool feature for those reasons that you just said. Yeah, man. Um, you know, Rodriguez, uh, Rodriguez actually shot that. Oh, oh, and Joey wrote it. My yeah, apologies. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I read, reread my yeah. notes wrong. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so that was cool for a variety of reasons. Um, first of all, Honda tuning had been around for, you know, 15 years. Yeah. You know, it, it's a long-standing publication for our industry. And in those years, you know how you have Super Street and they, they also do models, right? Yeah. And uh, um, import tuner models. Yep. So every, every magazine has its own style. Um, and Honda tuning was one that didn't utilize models. Yeah, they were just all about the cars. It was all about cars. Um, and so in all those years that Honda tuning had been around, they had never had a human being on the cover. Wow. So a lot of people don't, that's one of the nuances of that particular feature that makes it so 
epic. It was like groundbreaking. It is. It is in our in our niche of the automotive industry. You have a publication that that niche is 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 that's their book. Yeah, that's what they adhere to. That's what they look forward to. And so for my car to be on the cover of it again, you know, albeit four years later. Yeah, yeah. But uh, full, you know, uh, an entirely different version, which uh, you know, I, I told I've known Joey Lee for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, when he decided to start the Chronicles. Um, you know, we you know we would talk all the time, and I rem- I actually specifically remember Joey call, uh, calling me, and, and we were talking, and he's like, you know what, dude, I'm thinking about starting a blog, yeah, uh, like a Honda blog, man. What do you think? And we you know we talked about how there's other ones, because at the time, and even now, there are you know there are other ones. There's always going to be. Yeah. It's not like it was a revolutionary concept, exactly. But he just wanted to, you know, he was like, what do you think, Big Mike? And I was like, you know what, man, just do it, yeah. Right? I was like, if anything, just us, like the quote unquote homies. Yeah. We'll, we'll read it. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, it's a creative outlet, and it is going to be put in a position for other people to read it. I mean, who knows if it's going to take off? Yeah. Who cares? Just do it. And so, you know, that and, and you know, there, as, as you can say, the rest is history. He did it, and it was just like, yo, what do you think about exclusive? Like, let's do a, the first build thread on the blog rather than a forum, right. which is where everyone was doing. Yeah, that's what everyone threads. was doing back then. Yeah. yeah, and so it ended up being a really cool thing because to this day, there are people who are like, dude, I, I followed the Chronicles because of your build, mm-hmm. and now I'm, you know, dedicated uh, Chronicles uh, supporter. Yeah, and, and it's got like a huge following mm-hmm. now on the show. It's always been, you know, popping yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see so, that evolve. Yeah, so a lot of people, maybe they don't know how long how long ago we, you know, we, we talked about it. And he, you know, his creation has become this uh, this kind of like staple in the Honda community. So that's cool, man. So for him to write it, because he also knew me on a personal level. And Rodriguez, who I met, dude, I met Rodriguez years ago. I actually, because uh, Rodriguez is from San Diego. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a, a small clique in San Diego that over the years I've become acquainted with. And so uh, Rogers is someone that I looked up to. He ended up becoming, you know, he ended up becoming the head editor when he, he was just like everyone else. He's a yeah. car guy from San Diego. He ended up becoming, you know, uh, the head editor, right? And so for him to shoot it um, was, like you said, all of those reasons are super cool. But um, the the part that kind of like crowned the whole thing was Rogers. Uh, his creative idea so mm-hmm. he shows me a picture of a, a, an older f1 car yeah with like his driver with the helmet on like stig like yeah sitting on top of the f1 car and he was like this is the idea of what i want to do for this cover shoot uh are you down and i was like to climb up and sit on top of my car i was like fuck it man let's do it i'm man. down i'm like i'm not a small dude i was like but Let's do it. And and if you guys could ever see the photo that he showed me as what was the inspiration for that cover, yeah. you'd you'd understand people who are artistic, people who are photographers, people who are creative directors, etc. They'll see that and be like, that's epic. Because the photograph itself that he uh, took inspiration from yeah. was super dope, man. It's the kind of thing that, you, that any car guy would have like in black and white on their wall as yeah. a poster yeah. and he's like this is kind of what i want to emulate and i was like yo that's dope yeah so we did it man a lot of people don't know but i mean i took my shoes off i stepped up on one of those you pe- were like oh shit. i stepped up on one of those pelican cases yeah. held onto the homie's shoulder stepped, to, yeah keep excited yeah stepped up on my shock tower yeah and just stand on my valve cover yeah. stood on my cowl and yeah. kind of just turned around and kind of like walked myself up the glass and yeah. we were like he was like dude i don't know if you're gonna crack the windshield i was like because you know i'm in the center yeah and i was like i don't know i hope not but we just went for it and the same thing i have to sit on the roof and i could have totally dented the roof yeah but damn. um we just did it man and we went for how it. how many takes did you guys do do you remember how long it took uh well i mean you know he shot all kinds of photos yeah so uh you know he shot all kinds of photos but to do that cover, sh- the, the actual one where I'm seated, yeah. there weren't that many. Oh, okay. The Rogers is quite good, man. Yeah, yeah. Rogers is quite good. He's very dude, efficient. When he when he was like at the head of the throne of Honda Tuning, man, that was like, dude, I feel like I have every issue. It's yeah. Like, it was so good. You know, the, the loss of Honda Tuning was sort of one of those grandiose collective edit kind of corporate dealios. Yeah. Because... At the time when Rogers was at the helm, not only did um, shelf sales go up, like people who go to the shelf and just buy it. Yeah. They're not subscribers, but subscriptions went up. Yeah. And in a day and age when digital uh, is winning and print is dying, 
uh, for the subscriptions and shelf sales to go up was an extreme compliment yeah. and a manifestation of the way he controlled the book yeah and uh, the scene loved it and so for him to have lost that book and, and and lost that position when they got rid of it at least in the print form was a was a, a pretty big blow yeah know? dude i feel like honda tuning like meant a lot for the honda community and like when it was like, like done i was just like now what yeah i mean they, they got rid of the print version the digital entity and social media all the digital stuff still exists. but the instagram is still up right yeah instagram still up the facebook page is still there if you guys go to the website they still are putting out content yeah uh, very very frequently they're they're very active it's just not like a physical magazine yeah because print magazines are dying uh, yeah. predominantly because of people's god blogs. i would love to see that magazine come back yeah it, it's not gonna happen yeah then. not I, under the I, corporate I, I wish yeah not under the corporate arm it would have to be some private but the problem is the majority of people who would say bring it back i'll support it they're not they're not yeah. they're gonna say they are but they're not they, gonna buy it yeah i get people who you contact me social media all the time and they bring up magazines and they're like oh you know can you bring back honda tuning or does it plan to come back and i'm like were you a subscriber and they're like no i just loved it <laughs> i mean what the fuck is wrong with you yeah. like if you didn't subscribe and purchase it if you didn't subscribe if you didn't purchase it on the shelf why do you think that it that went gonna, under yeah. and why would you think it's gonna come back like they have to be able to make money yeah and uh you know people didn't support you know more it, because the internet man so blogs helped kill magazines mm -hmm. because you got people with a good lens they don't they don't have to be even good photographers but and some of them really have evolved i mean there's a lot of young kids that are actually quite good mm -hmm. at, at the uh, videography and photography and you you know they're willing to put that up just to make a name for themselves for free, for free yeah. so it's not even it's not even difficult for me to understand why people stop buying magazines i don't I didn't stop buying magazines. Likewise, yeah. But I understand why other people did. But those, it's kind of perplexing to me why the same people that didn't buy magazines complain that there are no magazines. Yeah. So that's a whole different subject. Yeah. But I mean, about that feature, that feature was epic for all those reasons. Yeah. I was the first human being of any type ever to be on the cover. Yeah. And when Rogers came up with that idea, he still had to shoot other cover photos because when he submitted it to his bosses, they could have been like, um no no thank you and then he'd use another photo yeah so the, the cover was one thing but me being on the cover was another yeah and and even he didn't know if they were gonna approve it yeah when he shot and it's it. cool that they did yeah you know, that that uh issue was like meant a lot to me too because my my ep3 was actually mm -hmm. in that in that mm -hmm. issue and 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 rod res wrote it too and it that's just was you know that was just a good issue or yeah. our issue man and i just like I don't know, miss the magazine, which I'm sure a I lot do too, of people yeah, do, because it just meant a lot to the community and stuff. But um, yeah, man. So I have to I have to bring up uh, uh Ryan Basari, aka Rywire. You two are like really close and been working side by side for a long time. How did you guys meet, and what does his uh, friendship mean to you? How did we meet? I would say maybe almost something like ten years ago. Yep. He was in northern. He's from Northern California, so he's I'm in Southern, so he's in Northern California. Um, I don't really remember if it was maybe a car yeah. or uh, an engine bay or something like that that led to uh, me knowing the name, but I, I knew the name of the company and I just got a hold of them. Yeah. And uh, that's when I was doing the prelude for the version in 08. So oh, it has okay. basically been 10 years. Wow. And so we ended up talking and I was like, this is uh, what I want to do. And uh, I, you know, I hear good things and um, I kind of just, uh, I know you're up there, but, uh, you know, because for people who aren't from California, they might not understand how massive California is. So, massive. so he's about five, six hundred miles, was five, six hundred miles away. So, you know, it's a, it's a good six, seven hour drive, depending on traffic and how fast you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's not close, you know. And But long story short, he was like, all right, tell me the motor. Tell me, the, you know, what distributor, what ECU. And we kind of went back and forth about that. And it was just like, OK, well, I've, I've, I've done a couple of those, but to do what you want. And I think, you know, I see the potential yeah. uh, for how dope this particular setup can be. Um, he was like, all right, well, you know, I'll come down. So he wow. drove from Northern California, yeah. which obviously if we didn't have some type of rapport, uh, that wouldn't have worked out. But, you know, we were strangers to each other in that sense. Yeah. But uh, he came down, we worked together. Uh, people who, who follow the Chronicles can remember seeing that uh, because, you know, we, we, you know, it was covered 
piece by piece on the Chronicles. I'm actually the one who took all those photos with the little, oh, tiny, wow, cool. little tiny digital camera. <laughs> terrible quality. When you look back, it was terrible quality. But but um, everybody got to see it, which was like the most important part. Yeah, um, but you know, and so he came down and he stayed at the spot and uh, he would drive down like, let's say on a Friday and he would get to my place uh, maybe, I don't know, 7, 6, 7, 8 p.m. or something. Wow, every time? Every, almost every, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then he'd come down, and then we would not do really anything car-related. It was already dark. <laughs> yeah. And then we would maybe, like, go eat or chill at, like, a hookah spot or something and just, you know, just talk, yeah. go to sleep. Uh, and, and right at 8 o'clock, uh, he would get up, I would get up, because we, we would go outside and work on the car. So a lot of, what a lot of people who haven't been around that long don't realize is that car was built in the driveway. Wow. Not in a garage. Not even not in the shop, just at no, a garage. Not, and not even in a house garage. It was in a a, um, a home driveway. Wow. So rent, you know, got a canopy, so yeah. you don't because Southern California. It was summer, so yeah. it was like 110 yeah, yeah. degrees. You know, yeah, you got to stay cool. So we we had the canopy, and uh, we just uh, worked on it under the shade, and it was like 90 in the shade and 110 out of the shade, and we would just work. And he would take measurements and dismantle. I would be taking this apart or that apart, and uh, you know people can go back uh, on uh, you know the Chronicles uh, vlog, you know, blog and yeah. see that. So, anyways, um, you know, and so I realized the guy's work ethic. Um, I realized uh, how talented he was, and we had fun together. We talked and laughed, and and then you know the the creation happened, all right. And so from then we started working together, and and. And uh, next thing you know, he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about moving down. Wow. And, uh, you know, the rest is, is kind of how it's evolved. He has his shop and the business can, continues to grow. And he supplies tens, literally tens of thousands of products and, and sales to people in, in our community. And, um, you know, my relationship with him is great. So it, it grew from just sort of a simple business and cordial to friendship and to very serious high end build all the way you know SEMA yeah and so on and so forth so it's you know it's very big time now television and um, um, you know just setting benchmarks and building for the community yeah and uh, so you know my relationship with him both business and personal is something that I value uh, he's a he's a different type of dude that's the only reason why he's able to have done what he you know a lot of people kind of think that he might be standoffish uh, and he, he he can be in some kind of way but it's not it's not necessarily anything personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just a different kind of person. Um, and, uh, you know, people are quick to have one interaction with someone. And then they're just like, well, that dude's an asshole. And I mean, you know, if he was an asshole to you <laughs> the one time you talked, then I get that. But, yeah. you know, no one's going to be a saint every day. Absolutely. You know? People are like, you know, you're, you're going through your, like, you know, work and dealing with you people know, have no culture, idea yeah, what they're going on in their personal life. Yeah. So, you know, so I mean, yeah, man, he's it's just a really, you know, it's a really cool thing to work with him on such a personal and grand professional level. People don't realize what he does. A lot of guys are very, very tunneled in their perspective. They think he's a quote unquote Honda wiring guy, but he's wi wired Pikes Peak. Um, hill climb cars wow. he's wired multiple formula yeah it's just cars. hondas are just how he like came out yeah came about like now he's, he's just doing like everything the fastest import in the world he wired yeah. i mean you're talking about motec and haltech and aem and everything in between and honda he can do essentially anything you know twin turbo lambo uh, wild uh, land speed uh, race bikes. Wow. I mean, he. Do people think that he just oh, like I have a K series. I'm gonna yeah. get a, a ride wire harness, and you're damn right he has that. But I mean, that guy's capabilities it's are still the roof. Endless, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Man. So anyway, so yeah, that's. Um, he's a good dude, and uh, he has his moments, as do I. And uh, you know, we we're gonna work together for a very long time man we've got some great stuff yeah you guys store. are doing some good stuff man. yeah thank you man yeah, i appreciate it of course, of course dude so speaking of magazines and and yours and ryan's relationship uh you guys were featured in in uh in july 2017 the honda issue of super street mm -hmm. as a double cover shot with ryan's type r and then your car how did that come into play like give us the details i mean i know like like you know it was a pretty good feature so just like tell us about that how did it come to pass? You know what, man? That's um, that's more um, Sam. Yeah. Sam Dew from Super Street. He's the editor in chief. He's the 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 big dog over there. That would have been more his idea. Yeah. But um, Ryan's car, uh, um, Honda, top ten battle of the builders the previous year. My car did it the next year, and uh, they were um, and are essentially considered the 
quite possibly the two most well-rounded uh, and or the two best Honda builds of yeah, all time. I'm gonna have to agree with you on that or them on that. Yeah. Which I mean, you know, everyone's gonna have an opinion on that, and and I dig it. You know, I like hearing other people's opinions. Um, but you have Super Street Magazine, which is the magazine for our community, and if the editor in chief. Uh, presents that as a rhetorical question. It was written by Aaron Bonk. Aaron Bonk has been around way longer than people realize. Yeah, that yeah. dude has had uh, his resume is massive, yeah. and he also was a head editor of Honda Tuning. The man is an actual journalist, and he is a, a through and through car guy, a through and through Honda guy, and he's an older gentleman, so his perspective isn't going to necessarily click with the younger generation. Yeah, but uh, you know, he's the one who wrote it, and and obviously they all. Uh, felt that that was a fair rhetorical question to kind of present to the community. So I think it's just a combination of 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 the the two builds being done by two people that actually know each other and then work together. Right. We're both in Southern California, and it made it easier for us to kind of talk to them. And it, ultimately, it was the magazine's decision, absolutely, not mine or his. Yeah. Or anyone's, you know. So it was an honor, man. I mean, Ryan's my friend. His in his Integra Type R is quite literally the most technologically advanced Honda, uh, maybe ever. Yeah. Uh, you have to put it into perspective because if you have people who did it like, um, um, I don't know. You got if you go back far enough, the guys who were first trying to figure out how to do you know, uh, uh, external coils. And, and it's kind of relative, you know, like someone was like, well, I don't think that I want to use the distributor anymore. Let me come up with like a cam trigger. So depending on the your perspective and how you put it into perspective, you know, there were advancements that had to be made for the next advancement to be made. Right. But if you're talking about presently, you're talking about a vehicle that, that utilizes, you know, massively high-end electronics. Oh, the best yeah. cars in the world use Motec and you have, uh, a wiring job that was probably you know 400 hours and if you charge someone a hundred dollars an hour which is very basic when you get into that high oh yeah end, very yeah. what is that that's forty thousand dollars yeah so a lot of the honda guys were just like oh it's cool it's like the dopest orange k-series turbo integra i've ever seen you know what it is the dopest orange k-series turbo <laughs> integra but that is so ridiculously a massive of an oversimplification mm -hmm. and, and and so Ryan wanted to showcase his skill and technology the paddle shift setup yeah I mean he had to create a paddle shift setup and have you know anyways people can read about the car google it um, and so Ryan went way over the top he wanted to build that car and you know it's a good 10 years ahead man. oh yeah dude so when I built my car and I was designing it I wanted it to be a, a more relatable version mm -hmm. in a certain way some people i think say that about his car because they honestly and they don't want to admit it sometimes or most of the time but they 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 don't understand it yeah and if they don't understand it they're not going to know how much time and effort and innovation and struggle went into it mm -hmm. so it's like it's like um I don't know, like a Bugatti, right? Yeah. A 16 year old is gonna go to a gas station, see a Bugatti under the lights and be like, holy shit. They're gonna pull out their phone, they're, you know, bust out an IG story or snap it or whatever, yeah. right? And then an hour later, they're gonna forget about it. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, it was crazy. Yeah. And that's kind of what happens to Ryan's Integra. People see it and they're like, what? This right hand, what kind of dashboard is that? What? I don't understand what's happening here. Yeah. Oh, this is crazy. This manifold has a dope coating. What is this valve cover? I don't get it. And they love it. And after a while, they forget about it in the sense of they don't relate to it. They don't know how to get a Honda HPD dry sump. They don't know how to have a, a completely measured and custom created interior based on his height and leg length. They don't know how to do a paddle shift. And in that moment, they love it. Mm -hmm. And after that moment, that's kind of where it ends right. for them. Okay. So uh, like a lot of people think of Bugatti, right? A Veyron or something. Yeah. So when they see it, they love it. I know that that's baller. I know that it's high end. I know that it's fast. But they can't, can't relate to it. Yeah, that. but they don't understand what exactly is going on. How does a car cost that much? Why is it able to go 200 miles an hour? They don't, you know? Yeah. It's just this epic thing and then it's done. Yeah. All right. So I think that's some kind of conceptual reasoning behind why yeah. you know, people don't understand his car. Well, with my car, I wanted to create a vehicle that is understandable, yeah. even if it takes a moment or more than a few moments. And if you can understand it, then you can relate to mm -hmm. it. So if you have 
the, if, if the uh, ECU is an infinity, oh, I know about AEM, I've heard of an infinity, and when you look it up, the number doesn't, the price doesn't throw you off. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, I've heard of uh, Nuke Performance, I've heard of AEM fuel pumps, I've heard of Vibrant Performance. I know, I know a lot of people that use Vibrant Performance. So instead of using some other company that's so far over the top, I, you know, you know, I've known Vibrant. I've known the guys at Vibrant yeah. forever, mm -hmm. and I, so I use all of their a AN lines and their fittings and their Vanjen clamps. It was Vanjen before. Now it's the a yeah, yeah. HD clamp. But the point is, is every piece that I did to that car was done so that it could be understandable mm -hmm. and therefore relatable. And I think that's one reason why it has, it has stuck and will be uh, memorable forever, mm -hmm. in the sense that people can look at it and kind of follow the lines and follow the flow and see the color coordination kind of figure out where the overflow tank is you know and kind of if they if they pay attention they'll get it and if they don't pay attention they can look it up yeah and you'll start to see and there's a lot of innovation there are people who are like that's the dopest prelude i've ever seen that's like saying <laughs> um what would be that the equivalent of saying that's like someone going to like a Picasso yeah. and looking at it and being like that's the coolest painting that has color in it that I've ever seen <laughs> yeah. or that's the coolest painting on a uh, on, on oil yeah. oil on canvas yeah uh, no that's considered some of the greatest paintings of all time of any genre ever any um, art media. which is which is of course a relative statement but the point is is if somebody looks at that and says. Uh, like if they see a Bugatti, oh, that's the coolest like supercar that's black that I've ever seen. They're they're missing the point. Yeah, they they don't get it. So yeah. so I think um you know it's it's the car's been out for a while and I get better and better questions yeah. via social media or when I travel the country to different events. You know, like I toured the East Coast with the car. Yeah, absolutely. In 2017, I got some really good questions. I also got some really uh, sad ones. Yeah. But the questions I got are an indication that there is. Uh, an evolution or in a growth at least within some people who are like I don't know what this part is what is that mm -hmm. and how can I do that on my car and that's a better question than you know why did you paint the car gray yeah and I'm not even mad at the gray question because yeah. I get that a lot I'm just putting it into perspective yeah somebody's perspective is based on their knowledge mm -hmm. so it's all about growth in that regard. You yeah. Know? So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, man. So 2016 was a huge year for you at SEMA. You took home a top 10 placing in the show's prestigious Battle of the Builders competition. And then you, you received a Young Gun Award as well. Tell us about that and what that meant to your career. Well, the SEMA, okay, SEMA, first of all, is SEMA is the aftermarket automotive industry. Mm -hmm. It is the epitome, it is the manifestation, it is a collection of all of the aftermarket automotive industry for the most part in one place, in one convention that is, you know, that's where, that's the mecca, you know, that's like, that's where you have to go. Yeah. And um, when they started creating this battle of the builders, it, it, it instantly became a very, very prestigious. Yeah, and competitive as well. It's very competitive, you know, so for the best cars in the world, hot rods, off-road Im uh, and import, sport compact, you know, you have those three categories. For those all to be in one place and then for them to create a battle in which everyone from any category um, can register and be a part of it. You know, all of a sudden you have a, a massive playing field and you have a high, a high level playing field. Yep. So um, for me to, to see that for a couple of years and say to myself, uh, you know, I, I have some ideas uh, the way I want to rebuild this car, I, I kind of feel like I want to be a part of this competition. You have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, I had faith in the vision and the execution. And uh, I asked Ryan uh, about four or five months out. And I was like, dude, I'm not going to be able to do this on my own. Can you help me? Yeah. And, uh, you know, even just something as simple as him letting me use shop space. And that's huge dude a lift is the most helpful thing ever like we mentioned earlier i built the car with friends in the driveway i'm a big dude i mean I, you couldn't even fit a creeper <laughs> i'd have to just drag my back underneath the car and you know you're you don't have any arm length and any torque it's tough it's tough but so a lift when you're standing or you're putting a motor in from the bottom versus cherry picking it from the top 
you know, time. Yeah. Time is the most valuable thing. Yeah. So, uh, SEMA was a massive thing. Making it into that top 10 of the battle was yeah, a that's hu huge, dude. huge, man. And so that's why it, it kind of makes me chuckle when you still have, as some people would call them haters, who say, I mean, it's a cool prelude, but I don't see what's so special. Um, okay, well, people who aren't Honda enthusiasts uh, judged it as one of the greatest automotive builds in the world. Yeah. Not the greatest Honda. They're not trying to label it as a uh, the Just greatest as an in as a car. Yeah, you know. And in the context of the SEMA Battle of the Builders, it ended up being judged as a top ten build. Yeah. So for someone to say, like, I think it's a cool Honda build. That it kind of makes you want to laugh yeah because you're just like okay well i appreciate your perspective but your perspective is is small yeah absolutely. and you try to expand your mind which is actually the entire point of what i do now yeah my whole purpose in my career and my role in our scene in our culture in our industry is to break open stereotypes and expand the minds of people who may not even realize that they're being tunneled mm -hmm. and that their perspective is small yeah. and they need to grow did you see a couple a, a lot of people that had like small perspectives and like you know uh judging your car and every stuff day. like that at, at specifically at SEMA at SEMA at it. every event I've mm -hmm. ever been to from yeah. from even one picture online it happens every day yeah and the, honestly all that does is show me that there's just that many more people that need they need to have I don't know you want to call me a mentor you want to call me a big brother you want to call me uh, whatever you want to call it but I mean you need something apparently your crew and the people you associate with they're not helping you grow somebody needs to teach you yeah somebody needs to show you that it isn't about breaking necks at the local parking lot for your whole life yeah it isn't about revving your car and hitting a two-step everywhere you go like you epitomize the stereotypes that people like us hate mm -hmm. and you can't get mad when the police treat you a certain way or when other automotive builders from other styles like hot rods when they laugh at an import you guys may very well be the reason why mm -hmm. all of us are getting laughed at mm -hmm. and i am the reason that they are not laughing anymore mm -hmm. yeah. and so that's that's what my goal is yeah that's a good goal man so um moving on yeah uh, your prelude right now sporting one of my favorite wheels of all time the classic t uh, c28 n yeah uh, uh and there you, you currently just recently put them up for sale do you have like a new wheel in mind or, or yeah pro, yeah yeah i'm playing with with sizing okay so um you know i have a good relationship with mackin so i have the ability to kind of do that in a little bit easier of a fashion than some other people i mean the wheels aren't cheap mm -hmm. uh you know but um but nonetheless it's what i want yeah you know oh so you're going to keep that wheel just different sizing well if so, i put them up because yeah. you know if if somebody would like to purchase them i'll sell them yeah um, but uh, the problem is, is that um, I, there's a little bit of damage to one. Yeah, a lot of people. It so, happens, man. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize exactly how much time, money, and effort went into that East Coast tour that I did with the car. Yeah. The car got damaged in a lot of minor to not so minor ways from just having to yeah, load, load unload, it up, transport, it. strap down this and that. So, anyways, those wheels. Uh, I love CEs. You know, Same. Uh, I'm a uh, I'm a grown man who's been in the scene for a lot of years, and I, that was my first set of brand new wheels wow. ever. Yeah. I've never purchased a set. Mine of Mine were TEs, but they're about to be. Uh, I'm about to get some. Okay, CEs so there you well. go. Yeah, I love those. I do. Those classics. Yeah, and when you go with a, a an offset, and you get the like the RR face and the concavity, and you get the lip and the concave face. Uh, it's a pretty beautiful wheel, yeah. but uh, they're up for sale. If someone wants to buy them, cool. Yeah. If they don't, cool. But um, the, the one of the, if not the most classic wheels of all time, is a TE. Yeah, like what you have. Mm -hmm. Yep. And TEs have so many versions. They have the Sagas. Yeah, I out prefer now. the OGs. <laughs> yeah. So you have the OGs. You have the TE37 Sagas, which are the newest version. You have TE37 SLs. You have you know, the gravels. You have so many variations. But that that design is pretty much the most classic Absolutely. so with that being stated uh i wanted a set of tees so I, i've ordered a set cool, of cool man yeah. that's awesome um it's a certain type of te and i'm playing with some sizing it's pretty aggressive nice um you're gonna go with like a meaty tire obviously well i mean i have a 275 mm -hmm. on the front of my car now that's pretty yeah, it's yeah. pretty up there yeah but um it's not so much the front as it is the front and rear mm -hmm. there's just a little combination of both because the cars all of the fab on the car was built for um global time attack limited class okay so i'm gonna just take the car and have fun you know yeah um so i want to get the right front and rear kind of like contact patch and play with the sway bar sizing and i have some custom coilovers being made 
uh, high end two ways. Cool. Um, and uh, custom upper control arms and stuff. I want to get to a point where um, I have the least amount to shake down or break uh, <laughs> when I go out there because yeah. you're going to break stuff. Absolutely. That's it just how it works. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just kind of want to get it to a point where I'm happy with everything and I know the specs for everything and I have everything kind of like logged out so that when I go, um, both electronically and technologically and, and mechanically, what's going to want to break or show weakness, I know, and I can just start hitting it yeah. quickly and efficiently to address. So that's kind of where it is now. Cool, man. Yeah. So, dude, what I love the most about your build is that there's a, a ton of awesome uh, inspirations and styles kind of like morphed into it. Can you yes. like care to tell us about those? Yeah, man. I mean, the car is, is a combination of, of, of inspirations from... Uh, you know, trophy trucks and sand rails, yeah. drag cars, time attack cars, F1 cars. And it's all like it's all in one place, you know. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I easily could have done that, and people could have looked at it and been like, "Oh wow, that's cool," and then just kept walking. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do they do that to build at SEMA Absol all the time. Absolutely, man. And, and using SEMA as an example. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, like I said, it's been it's been a very cool blessing to see. Uh, the scene and the industry as a whole generally not just like but like fully embrace the stuff that I do uh, but um, so you have like let's say something as easy as the exterior um, martini racing mm -hmm. which is one of the if not the most classic uh, racing liveries of all time of all time of yep. all time mm -hmm. you know martini golf um, and then even in the in the Japanese world, you know, uh, uh, Calsonic, HKS, you know, there's so many ones that are that are iconic to people. But on the grand scale of global racing, Martini might very well be the one. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to do, and it's a, it, it it serves as a bridge. The car is a bridge because on on one end you have import and Honda enthusiasts who are like, uh, what is that striping on your car? Cool. I now get to tell them Google Martini Racing, and they're going to get exposed to an entire world of yeah, racing. Knowledge is key. Decades of <laughs> yeah. racing, right? Yeah. You know, Martini, you'll see on Porsches, you'll see on Aston Martins, you'll see on all kinds of stuff. And so they, in that moment, the car and myself was a bridge. Then on the other side of the bridge, you have people who came up to me at SEMA. Uh, Martini has a massive cult-like following. Mm -hmm. And so I had people well-dressed you know, Europeans and other guys, you know, that were at SEMA, some of them in martini, official martini gear, all the way to just F1 fans. And they would come up to me and they'd be like, I didn't even know that you guys, you guys, which I'll touch on that quote. <laughs> Absolutely. That, that you guys, which has a very much a negative connotation, even if they don't intend it to be. I agree. I didn't even know that you guys knew what F1 racing was. So you have what is F1 racing? Not even what is, what is the, what are these colors? And then they'll learn about F1. And then on the other who follow F1 and don't give a damn about Hondas, now they're like, wow, I didn't multiple times, which is the ultimate compliment. I got hot rodding and, and European and like uh, WRC and like those kind of guys, fans of that kind of racing and building, come up to me and say, I didn't even know that you could build a Honda like this or that you Honda guys, are you kids? And I'm a grown ass man, I'm not a fucking kid. And they're like, I didn't, and they would still call me that because to, uh, to them, us as a whole, we're kids. We're a bunch of kids that build these little ricers. Yeah, yeah. And so even if they don't necessarily in that particular moment mean it negatively, that's still the terminology. Mm -hmm. As a grown man, they're like, well, you build a Honda so you're a kid. So they quickly, without even meaning to, they're like, I didn't even know that you kids could build a car like this. And so it's a bridge on both ends. And that's kind of what the point was to breed like swirl pots and surge tanks. Man, guys have been using that on other types of builds forever yeah and there are now people who are like what the hell is that i'm like oh it's a swirl pot or yeah. a surge tank they go by different names in different industries yeah but now you got entire industries of people producing swirl pots and surge tanks and people are buying them and it's gonna be it's, it's guaranteed to be a staple 2018 every honda b and k watch it's going to have a cool yeah. swirl pot and surge tank. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I'm the one who started that, but I mean, I'm just saying that's the evolution. Yeah. That's the growth of things. Cool, man. So um, uh, you got a tremendous, uh, like really good list of supporters and sponsors for your bill. Do you want to like tell us about them? Supporters? Yeah, and just like sponsors, the people who like went into like... There's a, yeah, so, okay, so that's the other thing, man. I think a lot of people might have the misconception that I'm just getting everything for free. I don't know where that came from, <laughs> um, but uh, you know I get it. Like I do have partners, mm -hmm. but see what a lot of the younger guys don't understand is, man, you need to put in your time. Absolutely, okay? you can't I, just go out and just be like, let me get some. Yeah, yeah, you can't go to a company 
Oh, we're gonna get into this grammar thing right now. I'm gonna talk about grammar. I have to address <laughs> it, man. Uh, my loyal guys that and, and girls that come into the live streams that I do, yeah. we joke and talk about grammar pretty much every single time. But um, to address your specific question and point, um, so every company that I work with on a partnership type level, I have purchased their products at retail over the years and have grown to like them. I've had companies approach me and want to give me product and money and I have just simply declined. Why? Because I don't like their company. Yeah. I don't like what it represents or maybe not so harshly, I don't know anything about their company. And so I don't want to associate my name or my builds with them because if they're a shitty company or if they have developed a name for themselves, even if they did it a long time ago and don't do it now by knocking off other people's stuff, I don't want that on my car. Absolutely, man. yeah. I don't so, you. you know, so the companies that I work with, I worked with um, Garrett, Honeywell Garrett. And, uh, you know, for, for people who, who've been around, they might know who Yukio was. Mm -hmm. Yukio um, was the guy at, at, at Honeywell Garrett, and uh, we were friends. Um, we just had mutual acquaintances, but we ended up becoming acquainted with one another. And he's the reason why I ended up having that relationship. And he uh, suffered a medical incident. Oh no! And uh, he's uh, he's um, you know having to address and recover from that. And um, it, everyone knows now it's public knowledge, but he had a stroke. You know, oh, he's in wow. his mid thirties, and he had a massive stroke. And so he's not working for them anymore. Oh no! But he's the one who set that up, and. I have guys who have been running. I mean, the Gar a Garrett Turbo was like the turbo. Yeah. Right? Back in the day, if you had a Garrett GT30 or a GT40, I saw that on Supras and guys who did it on their B series kits. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, I want to save up and get a Garrett Turbo. So, Garrett Turbos is one of the companies that I work with. I run one of their GTXs. Turbo Smart, uh, Marty at Turbo Smart USA uh, has been kind to me. And uh, vibrant performance. So the first company that ever supported me straight up was just like, dude, if you build it, we want to be a part of it. That's awesome. Um, was vibrant. Yeah. So Donovan, everyone who might know Donovan Griffith, massive dude, has been a personal uh, a fan of mine for years, and he works at Vibrant, and he actually has two brothers that work there. So the whole family, and over the years, we have developed a very, very good relationship, both personally and professionally, and that's what I utilize. It's about support, you know? Uh, they support me and I support them, both personally and professionally. So you have that. Um, Mike at Willwood, I, use, I utilize Willwood products. It's it's made here. It's local in Southern California. High quality stuff. I mean, a lot of guys didn't even realize that Willwood was making Honda friendly big brake kits for 15s. Yeah. Right. The track guys have been using that stuff forever. There's a, 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 a an appeal to running like a spoon caliper. But if you need an option that fits this or that and lightweight and different colorways and all these options, dude, Willwood, man. And so I use Willwood stuff. I have a good relationship with them. I paid for Willwood products before, liked it and now i have a relationship with them so once again you know that's, that's only a few companies yeah. you know um the, the prelude the gray that everyone loves on the prelude that's actually uh, exalta paint oh okay. so this particular time i ended up talking to exalta to utilize their paint products for this paint job before yeah. that you just nah man you just go you know you just yeah. pay a paint shop ppg dupont now i use exalta you know so anyways man it's just it's just um, the different companies that I work with are companies that I work with because I believe in them. Yeah. You know, same thing with Rywire. You know, a lot of people think everything I get from Rywire is free <laughs> because mean, he's my friend. Man, I still pay. Yeah. You know, and that's awesome that, you know, you support him and he supports you. I mean, yeah. dude, like you're going to ask somebody, hey, can you help me build this harness? That is probably about a six or seven thousand dollar wiring job. A, can you do it for free? And B, can you do it while you could be doing customers things? Yeah. So you're going to lose, what, 10, 15, 20,000 total if you actually do the math? A lot of the kids don't understand that there's real life money involved. Time is money. Yeah. The man owns a business. So I'm going to say do this for free and do it during business hours? No, Yeah, man. that wouldn't be fair, especially, no. especially to a friend. No. And first of all, Ryan, Ryan probably wouldn't even have done that. Yeah. But I mean, he, you know, he willing and able is different. What, I'm not gonna let my business go under to do you a favor. Mm -hmm. And I would never have asked him to, yeah. you know? But he's done a lot for me to help in different ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, and then my friend Cody. Cody's who I utilize to do the, the clay and the fiber work to create the custom wide body and stuff like that. So the, the, the network I have, my boy Dan, he has a shop called Wordworks, specifically part of the Accord community, but he's a very, very knowledgeable, um, uh, trustworthy, 
mechanic mm-hmm. so if it was like dude i gotta go pick this up i gotta go have this meeting can you help me so these are the different ways it wasn't just a company but it was more like a trustworthy person too some of them either worked at a company or they were just they're like how can i help right so you got a dude who's been a mechanic for 10 years and you're like yo can you just go pick up parts i go on a parts run if a person has too much pride they'll get offended yeah like i thought i build cars for a living and you want me to go pick up parts for you yeah. but my dude dan for example would be like all right because he understood that that's what needed to be done to get it to done. get it done yeah. you know so and that's a good thing to understand it's about having a good circle if you if your crew or your circle is a bunch of like dumbasses yeah well you're probably gonna be a dumbass for the rest of your life too (laughs) and i mean that's people need to understand you can be offended at stuff that i'm saying if you want to but this is the reality yeah you kick it with a bunch of knuckleheads what do you think you are yeah right yeah but if you kick it with people who are successful if you kick it with open-minded intelligent human beings you will have no choice but to grow with them so your circle uh, and and I think sometimes having zero circle, having no one around you is better than having a bunch yeah, of dumbasses. Yeah. Some, sometimes you need to go be by yourself. And people don't know how to be by themselves. People also don't know how to think for themselves. Mm-hmm. But that's a whole, that's a <laughs> oh, whole no, that's other a- subject. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Sorry. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to read a quote of yours. Um, you said, hard work, long nights, stress, setbacks, frustrations, focus, dedication, and drive. These are just some of what is experienced and what is needed when building a car to the level we have chosen to become um accustomed to so you helped ryan prepare for sema 2017 with his honda s2000 build just like tell us tell us about that okay so that's that's ryan's baby i mean the car belongs to a, a homie named angel but he basically gave uh, ryan creative freedom and uh, my role in that was very very uh um in the background mm-hmm. that's ryan's thing i just helped you know if i needed to pick something up if, if things needed to go and get um you know, tumbled and, and, and zinced and coated, uh, I would do the legwork there. You know, I, I did that for them. If it was just like, hey, can you just, I'll just assemble this side, like the brakes. Can you just do that side while I do this side? And anything, you know, just anything I could do to help. But that's Ryan's baby, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I connected him with Cody and Angel with Cody because Cody did my car, then Cody did the S2000. So it's just stuff like that, you know? Like, I mean, I just helped with that. I mean, that's a beautiful, s2000 build yeah absolutely it's a gorgeous s2000 build you know um so that's kind of uh that's kind of what it was man a little bit of creative stuff ryan would call me when i'm at the shop he'd be like okay so i'm thinking about doing this and i kind of want to do that and i'd be like okay well what about this ah, i don't like that okay cool and then he just do what he wanted to do and then other times he'd be like you know what dude you're right i think that one that one line or that one placement of something is better yeah so it's just you know friends bouncing off ideas we just happen to think on that grand of a level and so uh you know it, it was cool to play uh any role yeah in that particular one yeah dude so um so just like any any build you guys ran into some setbacks and issues you care to share some of the, like a story from that or i'm sure that was like not something you want to think about i mean but. it was bad dude i mean it was bad so you know you're talking about getting the car back from the body shop and it wasn't what it was supposed to be and then you take it back to the body shop and it's still not what it's supposed to be and that's difficult and it throws you off weeks right and then you you get a, maybe a certain suspension piece that was designed by itself and then you get another suspension piece and when you put them together they didn't work together yeah so the brakes those big brakes in the rear pose the massive issue with other components that all work on s2000s but don't weren't designed to work with those brakes yeah so that's just one and so when you have a week left or two weeks left i'm sure you guys were like oh my god dude, yeah we're putting a car together and all of a sudden it's like hey wait a minute did you tighten that down yeah i'm tightening down what about your side and it's like Yo, I am sitting against X or Y piece. And it's just like, what do you mean you're sitting against it? I'm like, try to turn the wheel. And it's just like, okay, okay. What do we don't even have time to address that? So we had like, Ryan had to end up nixing certain parts. People don't understand like that car will in some ways, a lot of ways that you don't see suspension underneath, etc. Things are not what they were originally supposed to be, but you have to adapt. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? So that's the, what, and that's what makes you like a better like artist is oh, yeah. you have to adapt. Yeah. Like, cause uh, nothing's ever going to go smoothly and like, oh, good, I wish. perfect. Yeah. You, it's, it's what, what your obstacles you have to like cross over yes. and how you, you, you know, what makes you 
a better Correct. creative individual. Like yeah. you, the quote you quoted of mine, yeah. Yeah. people don't understand exactly how much work. Like for example, on that S2000, the, for, for whatever reason, right? The car is such high compression, that's yeah. a 14 and a half one to one compression motor. Yeah. Maybe just the power and the kick it takes to start it. Like we, like Ryan, like we were testing something. This is like 12 hours before we're gonna leave. It's yeah. like 11 o'clock at night or midnight and, we're, and he's trying to leave at like eight o'clock the next yeah, after morning like to go to SEMA. Day, yeah. This is the day before rolling, right? And he fired the car and just vroom, We just blew the starter. It just spun within itself. Oh and we were like, uh, what? What the So hell? this dude yeah. had to go pull, and he was so fatigued, and he's like, dude, I'm, I'm not gonna leave at eight, I'll leave it like noon. So he's like, I can't do it, I'm too tired. And I, I had work, and I, you know, like, I was, I was exhausted too. So he was just like, I'm literally supposed to leave for SEMA in like eight, 10 hours, and I just blew out the starter. So he had to pull a starter off of his S2000, and put it on and this is right before you're supposed to leave dude that's crazy so there's a lot of work so so like for example man there are nights where um i've driven home from rye wire yeah. and i am literally swerving oh, God. it's unhealthy that's scary yeah, okay yeah. i get home yeah. this is when we were finishing my prelude for sema when when i put it in sema a lot of people don't know this story this is about three nights before we were leaving yeah i get into my driveway and i and i was like using a willpower and caffeine and just sheer focus to get home safely yeah and i was just hurting man physically yeah. exhausted don't you I, hate that when your body's just like dude, done two to four hours of sleep a night for uh for like two weeks and my body was in pain i'm not a kid you know a teenager they might be able to ride that out i'm hurting right so i get into my driveway and i'm sitting there bro i'm sitting there and i'm like okay you got to get up and go inside because it was like two in the morning I needed to go inside, sleep for three hours, because I need to get up at five wow. to get ready to go to one of my jobs. Yeah. So a lot of people don't understand how much work is involved yeah. aside from cars. But anyways, so I'm sitting there and I'm just like, dude, get up, right? Because I'm, I'm exhausted, my body's like done. Couldn't. So I'm sitting there in the driveway and I put the car in park and I'm just like, I'm here safely. And I think the combination of knowing I made it safely and, and just being fatigued, I was like, dude, I'm just, I'm tired. And then I opened my eyes and I'm like, dude, you're falling asleep in the car. Get up and go inside. At least sleep in, in, a, in a bed for in a few bed. hours. Yeah, because when you do sleep like that, it's like, it's not good sleep. No, no, all, yeah. not just that. So, you know, like I was doing, yeah, right? yeah. I'm sitting there. I'm like, dude, get up. And I'm like, you're dozing off in the car. When I opened my eyes, I was like, get up. You're, you're falling asleep. I was like, wait a minute. Something looks different. Yeah. And I realized that it was brighter outside. Oh, shit. So I had fallen asleep oh my God. in my car with my foot still on the brake pedal Yeah. for th almost three hours. Oh my God. And I felt like that, right? So I opened my eyes and I'm like, it's yeah. a little bit brighter out here. And I still see the red behind me from my foot oh depressing my the brake pedal. God. And so I, I had to, it's like, I had to will my foot. Can you imagine if you like, Oh, no, I mean, the car was off. Oh, okay, okay. But I mean, the brake lights are still on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I like, I lift my foot off and I'm just like, yo, it's five o'clock. Wow. So I walked straight into my house, straight into the shower, showered, and put my, my work clothes on and drove straight to work. Wow. And people don't understand that. Like, social time, time dating women, like, <laughs> you better put, like, where else are you going to get your time? Yeah. If you work and then you need to do more work. You, you take it from your personal time mm -hmm. and then you take it from your sleep time. Oh, yeah. And a lot of guys are just like, oh, like I can't do it. I can't make it in this world. Man, bitch, you better just work harder. Yeah. This shit, it's not supposed to be easy. It's not, it's if it was easy, everybody would everyone be doing would be it. successful. Everyone would have the dopest, let's say, car or business or whatever. Yeah. It's supposed to be hard, yeah. man. So, in, in, and if you find a good niche, after a while, it cannot be hard, but unless it's handed to you, mm -hmm. how else is it going to yeah, be developed? Absolutely. So, that's the thing. Like that quote, yeah. same thing with Ryan. I mean, no one was sleeping. People get cranky. People start yelling at each I'm other. I'm sure you guys got like the best of each other, too. Oh, like. dude. Dude, dude, you know, like there's times where, you know, you'll snap at somebody and if somebody doesn't have the ability to catch themselves and not snap back, it'll turn bad, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's just the it way is it, what goes, it man. is. It is yeah. what it is. Man. Absolutely, man. So, dude, uh, on the topic of like SEMA and, and all that and all, you know, building cars and stuff, like how do you feel that this past SEMA compared to like previous years? Because I know you've been going for like a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and ha what, what year has, what has been your favorite so far? 
Well, of course, I would say the year that I made it yeah, uh, into the top 10, that was one of the most surreal experiences ever. 2016, right? Yeah, yeah. go up on stage, uh, be filmed for television for Velocity, Yeah. Um, have the recognition of high, high-end, world-known hot rodders come up to you and say, I need to shake your hand, yeah. things like that. I mean, massive compliments that are very hard to convey to the average Honda enthusiast. They don't know how to put that into perspective. Yeah, you know, and some so people just never will. They never yeah, will, yeah. this is true. Yeah. So in that sense, of course, you know, being honored as a young gun, et cetera, et cetera, that was a very big deal. Mm -hmm. Now, 2017, uh, ob objectively, so I'm also on a SEMA educational panel. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. So, I spoke as the representative for the entire sport compact industry. Yep, yep. There was myself and then a gentleman from the restoration world, mm -hmm. Bobby Alloway, which a lot of people who are into hot rods are gonna know yeah. that name, the man's an icon. Yeah. I'm seated next to Bobby Alloway, who's a world known gentleman. Absolutely. And we are represented hot rod, sport compact, and I'm that dude at a SEMA educational panel. And that has come from uh, my accomplishments, but also my ability to enunciate, yeah. speak proper English. I'm a well-read person. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I don't have a Snapchat. I don't even have a Facebook <laughs> right yeah. now. I do. I'm a, I would rather read a book. Yeah. I don't even own a television. That's crazy. A lot of people don't yeah, realize I remember, that. I remember at, uh, at, uh, when we were just out to eat, like with, with Mike and all that, yeah. I was like, we were talking about TV and you were just like, I don't really watch TV. I, was I, like, I don't even own a TV. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, okay. Well, let me be technical. I own a television device. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is not connected to anything that transmits television okay. signal. Gotcha. It's not a smart TV. Yeah. So I'm not like on Netflix or yeah. or Hulu. I don't watch. I do, do not you watch do movies at all or no? Uh, so I will. I will watch a movie every every so often. But I mean, it would be like a red box. Yeah, yeah. And I literally have to, yeah. you know, the, the DVD player. Yeah. I personally like going to the movies. Though. I just like the experience. Hey, movies are fun. I mean, yeah. except that the I theater, remember. Yeah. Going to the movies when it was three seventy five. Yeah, now it's like it's twelve fifty for so the matinee dumb. or something, and I'm just like, okay. But yeah, movies are cool, man. Yeah, I mean, especially if you go to IMAX. Uh, I don't do three D movies. I think it's just punching your senses in the face. It's yeah. not really fun to me. Yeah. But, but it's like I, I get a headache and shit. Yeah, like a good <laughs> IMAX movie. Like I remember the first movie I watched in IMAX. Yeah. was three hundred. Oh god, that the, was like so good. Okay, well, the very first movie was when I was watching one of those nature movies as a kid, mm -hmm. but like a, a, a different type of movie. 300 on, on an IMAX screen was pretty epic, was pretty epic, epic man. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, I agree with you. Going yeah. to the movies is fun, but yeah. television, when you work and then you're doing other things. There's just no time. There's not yeah. enough time, you know? Yeah. So I don't justify cable or satellite bills or whatever. A smart TV is a good way to do it, yeah. but I don't even do that because I'd rather, uh, I'd rather go to sleep, man. Yeah. I'd rather sleep. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah, I'd rather sleep. <laughs> so dude, let's talk more about that, that panel that you were on. How did that go and like what kind of questions were, were people asking you well the panel um so yeah i mean touching on sema again yeah, yeah. so 16 was my favorite 17 in different ways seeing ryan's build yeah. and then and then 17 was also different because i we debuted yep. the Datsun yep, yep, yep. that I actually designed mm -hmm. and helped build for Discovery Show Fast and Loud mm -hmm. uh, Gas Monkey Garage, yep. which which is one of I think it is the most well watched yep. automotive hot yep. rod show on TV right now. Mm -hmm. So we can touch on that a little bit more yeah, later. Yeah, but yeah. so so for my point is. Um, my, my favorite SEMA, if you ask me on a different day, would be the first time my Prelude was there because Prime Media, before it was purchased by 10, okay. had a section outside one year, I think it was 2014 or 13 yeah, yeah. or something, where they had two cars represent each magazine. Yeah. So like uh, Import Tuner, Super Street, Honda Tuning, and oh, my Prelude magazines, yeah. was one of the ones that represented Honda Tuning. So that was, as an enthusiast, I'm parked outside, but it was like the biggest thing ever because I'm on the Southern California car dude. Next thing I you know, I'm at SEMA. Yeah. I'll be the outside. biggest stage. Yeah, the yeah. biggest stage ever. But I was outside and not that many people compared to inside Sawway. So if you ask me on another day, that's going to be my favorite one. Yeah. But it's, see, the point is, it's all about growth. Mm -hmm. It's all about growth. And every single time, it's about doing something a little bit better, yep. a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And a little growth. bit different. And too. a little bit yep. different. Yeah. Yep. So, so uh, yeah. So, anyways. Um, what, were, what did you ask me? Yeah, I just I was just asking you like, you know, how, how did how did that year in two thousand seven compare to like previous years? So being on the panel, okay, yep. the panel. So being on the panel uh, was a very very high compliment. Oh yeah. So for people on that level to say we'd like for you to be 
of the representative. Um, it was a very big deal. And then in regards to your uh, question about what did they ask me? Yeah, yeah. Like that, I was always curious about that. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just a combination of where do you think it's going? Yeah. Does it take influence from other industries? Yeah. Do other industries take influence from you guys? Yeah. And so on and so forth. And it was just a combination of, of all these different sectors of the automotive industry. Because in our world, in the import world, people have a hard time putting it into the grand perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it is a thriving, a multi-million dollar industry, global, car shows, meets, um, uh, uh, shops, and uh, resellers, retailers. There's all this, and, and all of this sw uh, swirling cauldron of people and cars comprises this much of the aftermarket automotive oh, industry. Yeah, yeah. So you go to SEMA, you have thousands and thousands of cars and 40 imports and two Hondas? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's a microcosm of what it is as a whole. Yeah. So people don't understand, you know? So it's a lot of that. It's a lot of putting it into perspective. And, and the panel was just more like, how does your generation, because once again, they presume we're yeah. all younger. Yeah. And I was actually the youngest per person on the stage, but actually not by much. Yeah. And they're like, how do you guys, uh, how does the influence of social media and the internet tie into your industry? So stuff like that. You know, that's kind of what the panel was about. That's cool, man. Yeah. So let's let's talk more about the uh, the, the 1975 Datsun uh, collaboration with Gas Monkey Garage. How did that come about, and like, what did that all entail? Well, you know, um, for those for those people that were at SEMA or yeah. saw the coverage of SEMA, you guys saw the car. Mm -hmm. uh, the the network decided. Um, to allow it to debut, which is something they've never done for the car to be seen publicly yeah, that's huge, prior man. to episodes airing. Yeah. It doesn't usually ever work that way. Yeah. Well, how did it do, come Was up? that like a, t sorry, sorry to interrupt you, was that like a timing thing or did it just like, or, or was or were they or were they like planning to do that? Um, I don't necessarily know if I know how to answer that yeah. question. Uh -huh. um, so when I made it, onto Velocity, because yeah. Velocity Network is the one that covers SEMA yep. and the Battle of the Builders. So when I made it on Battle of the Builders and made it to the top 10, you're inadvertently going to be covered by, by Velocity. Yeah. And when you make it yeah. to the top 10, then you are specifically covered. So I was on stage and all this kind of stuff, and I, and I had a couple people talk to me. And from those conversations, it turned into I don't, you know, we didn't know that there were, once again, we didn't know that there were import guys who could build cars like this. We didn't know who you were, uh, but we had heard the name and now we see you or et cetera, et cetera. We Googled you and there's pages and pages of stuff. And it just turned into, you know, you are a, a an intelligent, well-spoken person who represents an entire world that doesn't have any television presence. Yeah. And this is a hot rod shop. It's the world's most famous hot rod shop. Um, you know, we we have the idea to have a guest builder. Yeah. And so you, in your world, you are the one. And in their world, they are the ones. So why don't we bring them bring together? Bring them together, yeah. So they, they gave me the opportunity to, dis, to even pick the car. Yeah. And then um, design and lead out the actual physical build of their of Gas Monkey Garage's first Japanese import build, which yeah. is massive. That's massive, dude. Massive. Yeah. And so that was a huge deal, man. So a lot of people don't know. I'm a real low key dude. I just I went out there and I lived in Dallas. Yeah. And I went to Gas Monkey Garage and worked every day. And we filmed and built the car, and the car debuted at least publicly at SEMA. And the episodes will be coming up. I think the new season starts February 26th oh, okay. of 2018. Yeah, I'm and looking forward to that. However, they place it's a two episode deal, mm -hmm. so the build will show, uh, be shown over two build, uh, two yeah. episodes. Yeah. And uh, you know, whenever they decide to air that, or or for all I know, they could can it. I mean, they can do whatever they want, but I don't believe they are. I believe it'll be on TV. And uh, you know, it just came about. Uh, to, to be a little bit more philosophical, it came about because of my work ethic, yeah. I would like to believe. It came about because I present myself well and I speak uh, respectfully and intelligently. And, and once again, I just I keep wanting to tie in grammar, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get to that if we have time. <laughs> Let's definitely talk about that. Um, but, um, but yeah, man, so um, so it, it's just a, a, my, my personal build and velocity and SEMA. I have SEMA to thank. Yeah. And um, and um, it just got to a point where they were like, we think that you should do this. And next thing you know, I'm signing contracts and non-disclosure agreements yeah. and financial agreements. And uh, and it happened. Yeah. And you, and you, you flew out to Texas. Dallas. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and you were living there. there you oh, yeah. yeah. I lived out there and went to Gas Monkey Garage every day, man. Oh, cool, man. How was your experience of being on TV? Uh, TV is an interesting world. Yeah, I mean, 
if you need to do something and you do it, um, they might want you to do it again. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, because you know, maybe the lighting wasn't right. Somebody made a noise when they weren't supposed to. When, the, when there's microphones on, right when you were like, well, the reason why I did this was, and someone across the shop accidentally dropped something. It could be something as simple as that, yeah. where they can't use the audio. And so yeah. Can you just say that again? All the way to, uh, you know, it is a television production, so it has to be produced Perfect. for yeah. people to see it. Yeah. And so the, the, the experience as far as television as a production is, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's a lot harder than people think. Um, and so, you know, but I mean, it's like anything, man. You have to just adapt. Yeah, absolutely. You just have to deal with it. Yeah. How, how was uh, living in Texas? How was that? Texas is a beautiful state. The Dallas, Fort Worth area, Irving area where I was. It's nice, man. Yeah. Nice. Um, and, uh, you know, I was very excited for why I was there. So that helps, you know, your mindset helps yeah. with everything. So, you know, I just, uh, I enjoyed my time over there. It, you know, I'm in a foreign state. I don't really know anyone. I'm yeah. there to build a car. So I just zoned in. That's cool, man. And I focused on the car. And yeah. uh, the Datsun was a smash hit at SEMA. Oh, Seymour. dude, it was awesome. I mean, the you know, the people that you, you want to... Uh, even an unofficial stamp of approval would be Dotson guys. Oh yeah, because the Dotson people are that's a cult like following, and there are a lot of them tend to be purists yep. and they want things done a certain way. Yeah. But I generally got a very, very, very big stamp of approval from the Dotson community and like the Japanese classic community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I appreciated that because I wanted to stay true. That's why it has a Dotson, uh, the, the, like there's like Dotson-esque parts that were modified, but you don't think they were something else. Yeah. Nissan, I use an SR20 to keep it within the family, yeah. weight distribution, there's all kinds of stuff involved with that. Yeah. If, if, if people want to read about the car, yeah. Driving Line <clears throat> did a very, very nicely done a photo shoot and article mm -hmm. and Speed Hunters. Yeah. So if you guys just Google like Big Mike, Gas Monkey, Garage, Dotson, yeah. Driving line and Speed Hunters links will come up so you guys can learn about the car and then obviously tune into uh, Fast and Loud yep. to watch the two episodes. February. Oh, well, the se this new season starts yep. February 26th. And the, are you still saying the episodes can I don't be know like what anywhere, episodes, yeah. yeah. It'll be two consecutive episodes back to back, yeah. but I don't know what where they'll place okay. it. But yeah, man, support me because what I did was not for me. I did it for the culture. Absolutely. I did it for the industry to show on national television the amount of planning and detail and yeah. execution that import guys yeah. use and it's gonna show them that there's history, racing lineage, pure, like a purist perspective, a racing perspective. There's so many factors that went into that car. And when they see how much planning and effort went into it, I think any real car guy, whether he's a, a muscle car guy or not, is gonna appreciate that. Absolutely. And that is shattering and helping to shatter the stereotypes yeah. that exist about our world mm -hmm. to the rest of the world. Yeah, and that's my goal. Yeah. I'm an ambassador, if yeah, you will. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, and also, like, you're, you, I know you were t uh, touching on this when we were eating earlier um, with everybody, but I think, like, your reasoning behind picking that chassis was just, like, genius, man. You know what, dude? The fact that they found one. <laughs> was was pretty awesome in the condition that it yeah, was in. Yeah. But uh, being able to to choose the chassis gave me the opportunity. Seventies Datsuns are timeless, man. I mean, two forties, two sixties, two eighties. They're appreciated by like everyone. By man. everyone. I mean, you have Bob Bondurant Racing School, Paul Newman. You know the actor. He raced them. There's so many uh, uh, titles, SCCA yeah. titles. There's such a rich racing history yeah. that that chassis and those body lines I felt would be the great uh, bridge yep. again as a bridge because if I had picked a Civic it doesn't matter how fast or powerful or nimble Ooh, a Civic a was Civic, to yeah. Hot Rod guys they'd be like they built a fucking Civic <laughs> and they wouldn't care Yeah. so a, a Datsun that was i think the right choice i think so too man i appreciate it yeah man. of course dude. so dude you're really heavily involved in tu the tuner evolution tour how did you get hooked up with jay and the crew and what do you do for them at the shows you know man um for those that don't know yeah yeah you know it's kind of evolved right so it got to a point where i was doing let's say a lot of week fest right yeah yeah I, was, I mean i've been going to week fest forever yeah i was going to week fest before it was called week fest it was in the garage right yeah, yeah. in the ja in, in, in <laughs> japan town in san francisco yeah i mean i've been i've been a part of that i think i think the first one i went to was in 08 okay yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. 10 years okay from the very beginning yeah and uh i went and did that and it got to a point where um i won uh, a best Honda, mm -hmm. uh, I think like four times in a row. Uh, SoCal, NorCal, SoCal, NorCal, and it kind of got to a point where it was unofficially like, you know, you gotta sort of stop, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and so it, it just sort of segue to, hey, do you mind helping judge this time? Yeah. Cool, man. That's an honor. It's like you're winning yeah. the award. You, you, you're the best one yeah, to do that. Dude, yeah, and it was a really cool compliment. Yeah. And it, so I started doing that. And then and other events over the years that had already been kind of like, hey, dude, what do you think about my car, big mic, et cetera? Yeah. It was cool. But this time it was more like, can you help judge? And then it turned into, well, what about the next one? And Because I was going to support that event anyways. Absolutely. And so it kind of just turned into I was unofficially a judge. Mm -hmm. And I judged a lot of them, man. So at SEMA... Um, to segue to, to Tuner Evolution. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, at SEMA, uh, let's see, maybe four years ago now? Yeah. 2018 might be five. Um, I think about four years ago. Okay. Um, I'm at SEMA. I'm actually in one of the after parties, right? Yeah. So it's late night. And uh, uh, a guy named Jay Martinez mm -hmm. comes up to me and he introduces himself. Very simple. We were in a part of the club which wasn't so horrifically loud that we could actually yeah, hear each other. Yeah, don't have to talk to people at, yeah. at those kind of places. And uh, he came up to me and introduced himself. We talked. Thought he was a cool guy. I know who you are. Let's link up sometime and talk. And it just turned into, dude, out here on the East, everyone knows who you are. Everyone appreciates what you've done. I'm not sure if you know that or not. Um, have you heard of Tuner Evolution? Yeah, I've heard of Tuner Evolution. Okay, cool. Well, you know what, man? I don't know, man. Would you be willing to maybe come out to an event and uh, and be a judge, right? And so I said, okay, you know what? Let's talk about it. Um, I think it would be cool, you know? I, 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 the East Coast has always shown me love, you know, via forums yeah, and whatever methodology yeah. we could have communicated yeah and it just turned into me going and i you know i got along with the staff and you know i take any job i do seriously and it just turned into a, a thing now where i've now been going to the events um pretty much every single one yeah, yeah. for the last almost four years wow. now and now yeah. there's their first southern california event, which is big yeah. which is happening tomorrow uh right here um you know at anaheim convention center so to see the growth um and be a part of it to some degree you know holding the drivers and the judges meetings judging um emceeing uh the award ceremony being a part of it and, and then yeah and, that's huge man that's a big part yeah it's super cool man i also emcee the eyeball economy oh yeah, yeah i've yeah. been going to that for I think this is the third, what, year 14 maybe? Yeah, yeah. And I probably missed maybe one Okay. out of 14 years. Yeah, you went You went to their first annual, uh, the Midwest one, right? In yeah, I'm the, MC, yeah, I'm the yeah. MC for okay. all of them. Cool, cool. So the, uh, the Mid-Ohio one, or yeah. the Ohio one was super cool. Yeah. The Florida one was super cool. So it's kind of, it kind of has just evolved to where the geography of things, the internet. Yeah. I mean, geography is almost negligible. Yeah. So someone in Jersey, New York, tri-state area, someone in SoCal, we're looking at the same event coverage. Yeah. If neither of us were there, we're looking at it from the same playing field. And so everyone has a similar perspective and, and exposure. So it, it's just turned into this thing where I now get to travel. There's an event called MIMS Honda Day, yep, yep, which yep. is the UK's largest Honda event. Mm -hmm. I, I MC and judge over there. Yeah. So I get to travel to England and then they're doing a Belgium edition, That's which they cool. did last year, but I couldn't make it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go to Belgium and uh, in England and Belgium and um, you know, uh, there's just it's just crazy, man. Yeah, that's awesome, it's dude. Crazy. That you're getting to experience all those different like car yeah, scenes dude. and and the shows out. And so all yeah, over. Tuner Evolution is one that put a lot of effort into having me be a part of it, and I appreciate anyone who's willing to put effort into me in yeah. in, in, in any context, right? Yeah. So I reciprocated. And I did it gave my time to that event, and I it's just like I gave my time to Week Fest because I would you know drive up you know six hundred uh, miles, five hundred miles to yeah. be a part of the event for you know years, you know ten years. Yeah. And um, and so with TE, it just was like, well, you do a good job. You get along with everyone. You're well spoken. Do you want to come to the next one? And I would I'd be honored to next sure. one, the next one, next and, one yeah, and then yeah. you blink your eyes and here we are, you know. But I mean, just like my magazines, I'm not a staff member. Mm -hmm. uh, I freelance for Import Tuner, Super Street, Honda Tuning, Bonsai, Pass Mag. I'm freelance. Yeah. Same thing with the judging. Yeah. You know, I'm not employed by IBOC. I'm not employed by TE. I'm not employed by anyone. Yeah. I'm just me. Mm -hmm. And if someone reaches out and wants me to be a part of an event, we can discuss that. And it's a very big honor to do that. So IBOC. TE, MIMS, Honda Day. Um, I'm working with uh, you know uh, other, more events throughout 2018 that want me to be a part of it. And so I just uh, continue to thank God for the blessings. Yeah, man. That's growth. awesome that it's been like such a 
good domino effect with the shows yeah, and being yeah. involved with them. Yeah. So, dude, uh, most notably for you, like working with Tuner Evo, and then you said like Week Fest, you've you've gotten the chance to obviously travel a lot, specifically like in the country. Yeah. Uh, how would you compare both the East Coast and the West Coast as far as like car scenes are concerned? I think that in many ways the differences that exist in people's minds yeah. exist because people think they exist. Yeah. <laughs> okay? In the end you have let's take Hondas. Yeah. In the end you have and even like, you know, the UK. I've yeah. been to the UK and looked at their Honda event. You're gonna have cars that are done with um uh, no patience. Mm -hmm. They're rushed. Yeah. They're uh, loud, and they're on fake parts. Yeah. And replicas and stuff like that. And they're they're doing that because they want the look. Yeah. And if you if you simplify it, it's the attention. They want to be a part of it. They are a part of it, but um, they're just doing it um, for for attention. Yeah. Whether or not they want to acknowledge that. Okay. That's going to comprise the majority. And then you have the middle class, if you will. It's kind yeah. of like it's kind of like like country economics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The middle class is like smallest, yeah, or smaller. Yeah. And then you have good quality cars. I mean, pretty nicely done, solid choice, um, good, good, uh, uh, you know, like execution. And you have some good, like some quality cars. You're like, man, that's that's a solid. Like, yeah. I would daily drive that. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing. And then you have the smallest group, which is the best cars. Yeah. You have the people that are willing to spend the most time, willing to spend the most money, willing to be patient to execute a certain look and a yeah. certain style. And that is going to comprise the minority. Yeah. Um, it's going to comprise the minority because the the majority of people are not willing to spend certain amounts of money uh be patient they're not willing to support their argument is oh it's just the wheel who cares yeah and that's that is not a relevant no, argument not right? at all not at all but um you know we can get into that later um, yeah. but the point is is that the, the the majority of people who complain about why they're looked a certain way they they look a certain way uh, they are looked at a certain way because they behave a certain way yeah. and because they look a certain way. They are looked at a certain way because they look a certain way <laughs> yeah. and because they act a certain way. And you cannot expect to be viewed in a certain light and with a certain amount of respect if you don't earn it. Yeah, and that's it's the gotta thing, be earned. That's the problem. Yeah. Everyone doesn't understand, well, how come my crew or how come my car or how come me as a person is looked at a certain way? How come people don't respect us? Well, first of all, the fact that you're like, how come nobody respects me? That type of potentially douchebaggery perspective, that might be very well why nobody does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because you're and out, some people just can't like grasp They that. don't know, no. they absolutely they do They just not. don't see it. They don't see it. Yeah. Well, how come, you know, my car didn't get accepted into this event, or how come my friends didn't, and the internet's quick to jump on like a mob mentality. You're like, uh, I'm sorry, man, he's your friend, and he might actually be a really nice guy, but his fucking car is ugly. Yeah. And if the if the, the show, because I'm not the one, I'm like, so whether it be, you know, Mims Honda Day, whether it be uh, Tuner Evolution, whatever, I don't decide which cars get in. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people kind of just start taking it out on me because I, you know, try my best to answer DMs yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, contact whatever show not or me, me or, yeah. or company yeah. did not give you the sponsorship. So like some people, they know that I know a company. They hit them up for a sponsorship. How come they didn't sponsor me, Big Mike? Man, I don't know. <laughs> ask them. Like, you need to ask them. Number one. Yeah. Number two, if you really wanted me to answer that, I bet you if you let me saw whatever sponsorship proposal email. Yeah. By the way, I'm getting right back to grammar. Okay. <laughs> if you let me see what you sent them, I wouldn't care who you were. I wouldn't sponsor you either because yeah. you probably sent them an email that looks like a sixth grader. Yeah, wrote dude, it. grammar is huge. See, and, dude, man, let's just talk let's about just that. Let's talk about it. Let's okay? go. Let's Listen to me, man. Listen to me, right? <laughs> Text messaging, fine. You want to text your friend and use a bunch of emojis Yo, and bitmojis and acronyms and, and, and whatever, fine. But you better be able to know how to turn that off. And when you generate an email to an adult mm -hmm. that works for a company, you need to be able to create sentences, mm -hmm. okay? And people are always just like, in my live stream, the people who come into my live streams <laughs> actually now know to practice proper grammar. Because I will correct them and be like, dude, if I don't know you, when I read that, 
I think that you dropped out of school in seventh yeah, grade. Yeah, I think you're like not smart and, or you know, something. I'm like, did yeah. you? Yeah, did you drop out of school in seventh grade? And they're like, no, man, I have a degree. I'm like, well, you well, look and sound like a, like a kid yeah. who dropped out of school in seventh grade. <laughs> and then they're just like, well, who fucking cares? It's just a live stream. It's just social media. It's just a text. I'm like, well, clearly you don't, but I'm trying to get you to understand that. Okay, let me try it like this. Yeah. When you're a kid and you're in school and they want you to learn how to spell and enunciate and read, how do you do it? You use all your senses. Yeah. So you read it with your eyes, you have to say it out loud, so you use your hearing mm -hmm. and your tongue, mm -hmm. right? And you have to um, uh, listen yeah. to yourself saying it and to others saying it. So your sight, the sounds, hearing, all of the senses. That's yeah. how they teach you. Yeah. Now, if you are on YouTube and Instagram and Snapchat all day long, yeah. And you type incorrectly, and read incorrect English, and hear incorrect English in like YouTube videos and like yeah. people's snaps and stuff like that. If that's what you touch, read, and hear and speak, you are literally undoing what you learn. What you learn. Mm -hmm. So when you say to me, "Who cares? It's no big deal. I can do it properly," and I'm like, "All right, we'll go ahead and type that back out properly." It's not right. Yeah. And I'm like, "Let me guess." You didn't get a sponsorship because you sent them an email like, I'm big in the scene and I go to car meets and you should sponsor me. Don't. And if you at least spelled that right, you would have a better chance. I know they didn't. Yeah. I have friends that work for the warranty. Let's say warranties, tech. How about the tech information? So you're trying to send a tech question to a company. Yeah. It's a technical question. Yeah. And if your sentence structure and grammar is atrocious, they don't even know what you're asking. Oh, absolutely. So I have companies- Or they won't even just reply. Or they won't reply. Yeah, right? which gets, is what these people are experiencing. <laughs> right, so yeah. you have sponsorship proposals, you have tech warranty information, or just good old regular general inquiries. Yeah. And, and I have friends at companies, they show this to me and I'm like, this is laughable English. Yeah. And you know what guys, anyone who listens to this, that's I'm probably talking about you. <laughs> and you know what? That's your fault. Yeah. So you need to fix that. If you can turn off text and Snapchat and Instagram and YouTube grammar and mm -hmm. put on proper adult grammar, so be it. Mm -hmm. But 90% of people who do that, who say they can do that, they don't they, they can't don't, do that. Yeah, because they're so in stuck in the, they're way, stuck. In the ways. Yeah. So in my opinion, it's better to practice it the correct way than to practice it the incorrect way. Agreed, man. So that's with anything in life. Absolutely. So, anyways. Oh, so, dude, moving on, man. Uh, so, somebody that 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 you're you're pretty close with that I that I'm gonna try to get on my podcast um, at some point in time when we when we when the stars align is uh, Frank from Downstar. Yeah. Uh, you guys have been very cool for a while. Mm -hmm. I know I know his bolts have you know been on your builds and stuff like that. And he you know you when you were going out on the tour or whatever you you know linked up with him or whatever you guys did like a big mike x downstar uh collab to you tell us about that okay so uh yeah frank's like my little brother mm -hmm. he's like a younger brother to me um and we, we get along very well i appreciate anyone who has a hustle and a grind and, and a, which and, he and does a, with a yeah. vision and yeah. a dream and so that's one reason why i rock with him i probably don't like or agree with 65% of anything he says or does. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand that there's a difference. I can be a man's friend. Yeah. I can appreciate his grind and not want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. It's a very big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So a lot of in this day and age, I think people are so fucking sensitive that they don't oh, understand yeah. that if you just because I don't like someone's music or I don't like someone's style of dress doesn't mean I'm hating on them. Exactly. Yeah. I just don't want to do it. Absolutely. I wouldn't do it. I don't <laughs> like it. I wouldn't do it. That doesn't mean I'm hating. It's a very big difference. Oh, absolutely. So, big difference. like I said, Frank is my friend. Yeah. He's like a, a, a brother. He's like a younger brother to me. Yeah. And that's not, I don't use that type of terminology lightly, but literally, 65% <laughs> of things that he says yeah. and does, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but that's his style. That's what he does. And yeah. I'm just like, I honestly think that that looks absolutely atrocious. <laughs> and I'll tell him that and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Or we won't talk about it. But my point is, is that he knows that. Yeah. It's not like That's he cool that you know. guys are on that page. Well, that takes maturity. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know? And people. Because a lot of people would be like, okay. Yeah. Oh, like, you're not, a dick. Yeah, or you're yeah. a hater. Or, or like, you're not a real, like, a real friend. Like, you know what they say? Don't call, your friend isn't your friend if they haven't supported your grind. Yeah. I don't believe that. Uh -huh. I think that's a really cool, like, like internet meme, but in real life it's different. Yeah. If I had a homie who sold crack, 
You're not gonna. Support what am I that? supposed to support that? <laughs> yeah. No, man. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. So you can you can try to give these like one liner memes all of the power they want. Life's not a meme. Mm -hmm. Life isn't a one liner. You know, it's it's not that simple. Sometimes you know. So anyway, so with Frank, um, you know, he, like I said, he has ideas. He has things he wants to do. Yeah. And he was the one who was like, you know, you want let's do a T-shirt, man. And and so we designed it together and just quick strike T-shirt. Yeah. Put yeah, it out quick there. Strike, yep. Super cool, man. It was a cool thing. You know, a lot of people kind of remember that I'm from the West Coast and I actually come from a certain type of background, uh, where. Uh, paisley print yep on the west coast Big that's not west. that's not a fucking fashion statement man <laughs> that's a lifestyle yeah and there's a certain representation you know, i come from you know a, a background before cars where it's um uh you know you pick the wrong color or or the wrong you know combination of numbers or letters and you have to answer for that yeah. you know so my representation of that you know was uh black bandanas yep so i ended up rocking black bandanas and i utilized that for my entire seats mm -hmm. interior yeah. in the previous build so it's kind of become a staple everyone sort of associates that with me and and i'm good with that yeah. so it was just like that's part of the design in old english my personal logo it's on my shirt now but also a lot of people don't know on my wire harnesses that ryan makes oh, yeah. it says big mic edition because they are custom made in certain ways um, Old English is a big part of my background and um, so that's part of uh, my logos and things like that. That's awesome. So it's just kind of a thing. Paisley, bandana, and um, and Old English, man. So it was a quick strike tee, it was a cool collab and in answer to the other thing, I used, I think I'm, I believe I'm the very first car ever to utilize all Downstar hardware. Oh wow. So a lot of people though, I don't know if they don't understand, but he doesn't make the bolts. Mm -hmm. He makes the uh, beauty washers okay okay so the colors the design that's frank mm -hmm. so the little beveled edges and a shoulder and a tapering he you know that's him that's him yeah so i use that on the entire car so you know i didn't do a build thread i think that's another thing there's been multiple magazines there's been multiple coverage but people don't understand that on the prelude yeah if you were to look on the back side of the knuckle the hub trailing arms control arms fuel tanks surge tanks Every bolt on the entire car is downstar. That's crazy every bolt. Cool. Well, every bolt with the washer. Right. So the, the the larger ones, the smaller ones, M6s, M8s, M10s, M12s, transmissions, all that. I mean, you name it. So um, you know, and, and I need to go back and do some kind of build thread uh, because Dude, people don't be understand. Epic. People do not understand uh, what the detail is. They don't. They don't have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, but anyway, so yeah, so I mean, that, you know, that's Frank, man. Like, like a lot of people. Super cool dude. Yeah. yeah, dude, he's super cool, man. Yeah. He's a really cool, likable dude. He's got crazy ideas, and he and he just he's down to just up and do them. Yeah, he's down. He's down yeah. to just do it. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's been super cool to see him because I remember when he when he first started the company like years ago, and now where it is today, it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, super absolutely cool. self made, man. Yep, absolutely off of just grind. Yeah, it's so super. Cool. That's why I support him, man. Yeah, awesome, dude. So. I just gotta ask, man, who or what have been your biggest influences in life with everything that you do? In life? Yeah. Oh, that's deep. Okay. In life. Um, uh, first of all, God. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I believe in the good Lord and that's the reason why I'm, uh, I'd like to believe a very moral, ethical human being. Um, I'm very well mannered. I mean, that's of course my upbringing, but that all kind of ties in respect um respect is disappearing in in our day and age yeah, man. and it doesn't necessarily have to be grounded in a spiritual side but i very much believe that i have to um uh answer for my actions mm -hmm. i need to um be a good human being not because i'll go to jail if i'm not not because of anything other than i believe that it's the right thing to do and my versions of right and wrong come from uh, Christianity and the Bible I was raised a Christian and I don't particularly care about a religious title or a denominational title it's not so much about that my moral compass my ethics my actions are, are going to be based around uh, my belief in God yeah and so I believe that it doesn't matter if I get caught it doesn't matter about that it matters that there is simply something that is wrong to do mm -hmm. and there is simply something that is the right thing to do and it doesn't matter if other people know or agree you have to do what you believe is the right thing mm -hmm. and not do what you believe is the wrong thing <laughs> yeah. so my biggest influence uh, in that sense is, is that yeah. my, my my compass my guide is is God yep. and so I try to be grateful for that um, 
people uh, if you want to get into car stuff i mean there's just any anyone who came before me right uh, and i still learn from people that come after me but yeah. but yeah i mean like like you have like oh man so many people <laughs> yeah there's so many people but i mean you know in 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 the end it would be some of these people i wouldn't even be able to tell you their names in the sense that i was a kid reading magazines t uh, 15 years ago and i didn't know that guy but i loved his car uh, and then and it just like sparked that yeah, yeah exactly that, that. and then forums you know um, I may never have never have learned and to this day will never know that person's real name but it was a screen name they were active on the forum they posted cool content or threads or whatever which gave space to the YouTube thing I, I'm not a big youtuber but I mean you got people that subscribe and follow people every day and they post up their life on that so I mean there's different inf influences man but I yeah. mean there's something grand like Senna like that's a whole different conversation, but you know his his role in like the NSX and and his F1 capabilities and his accomplishments. So you have something like that, which is like way out there. Yeah. And then you know God, which some people are going to find like way way out there. But then you know just anyone who came before me who worked hard and was willing to yeah. try something different. They just like sparked it for you. Yeah, man. It's it's all yeah. about influence, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Cool. Those are some good words, dude. So um, you're you're really big into like fitness and working out. Do you have any tips for like the health conscious people out there? You know what, man? It's funny because I'm a big dude, um, and I go up and down with that with the uh, what I'll I'll go with cushion. I'll yep. call it cushioning, mm -hmm. insulation, natural <laughs> insulation. Um, right now, I actually uh, bulked up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would say like mostly on purpose. Yeah. And a lot of it like traveling. Yeah. Oh man, I did so, 2017. Oh, it's so hard when you travel. Dude, 2017 was an epic year of travel for me yeah. and everywhere you go there's amazing food. So if you don't, you know, cook for yourself and, and be extremely conscientious of what you eat, yeah. you know, you can end up kind of, and I have the body type where if I eat well, my body's going to look like I eat well. <laughs> yeah. Man, I do, I do. I have friends that own CrossFit gyms, uh, Division I uh, basketball players, Olympic power lifters. Yeah. Uh, I know girls that are physique and fitness competitors. I've seen every version of that. And I mean, I know people that eat five, seven, ten thousand 10,000 calories a day and they can't gain. Yeah. They, their body will never get fat. Oh By dude, let me tell you this right now. <laughs> I am clearly not that type, okay? <laughs> um, but I mean, it's all about consistency. So yep. fit, uh, fitness tips for anyone, you know what, man? Forget powerlifting, forget CrossFit. I say forget all that shit. If you're struggling to do it, I say the 80%, the, the, the an average percentage that people use is 80%. It's 80% how you eat, 20% how you train. That's so just start there, man. Yeah. Stop eating bullshit. Don't go through a drive-thru. Drink water. Um, you know, alcohol, if you guys want to drink alcohol, drink alcohol. But don't abuse it. <laughs> Here's a, there you go. Here's another thing that people don't know about me. I don't drink alcohol. Oh, wow. I don't consume alcohol. It isn't even a moral thing. I'm a very, I consider myself a very moral person. It's not a morality thing. Yeah. I just simply choose not to consume alcohol. Yeah. I don't like to, to give away control of my thought process. So um, I don't, I just don't drink. Yeah. It's an, it, I'm around people all the time that drink. And plus it costs a lot and it's not. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, I don't judge people. If someone wants to sit down and have a 40 in front of me or uh, three Long Islands and I know they're about to just be bent off their ass <laughs> for the rest of the night and they yeah. might get in the fight, I have to save them. Yeah. Hey man, that's what you want to do, do you. I'm not yeah. going to like not be your homie, yeah. but uh, I'm not going to do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so that's just that thing. And fitness tips, man, drink more water. Drink so much water that you piss out mountain spring water. <laughs> At the end of the day, man, I produce mountain spring water. I don't know if that's TMI for this podcast, but you know what, man? Like, I can literally, at the end of the day, you can look in there and be like, that's I don't even think that this man went to the, took a piss. Because this, you know? Uh, but anyways, uh, just drink water, man. Eat less nonsense. If they deep fried it, I don't think you should probably eat it very Agreed. often. Agreed. If they battered it and then deep fried it, don't think you should eat that very often. <laughs> you want to enjoy a meal. You want to go out with your peoples, your girl, whatever. Your Just be like smart about yeah, it. Yeah, dude, dude, you want to indulge. I mean, life's short. Enjoy yourself. But that whole thing like YOLO, life short. Man, you know half the time why life short? It's because your ass has gout and diabetes because <laughs> you ate like a dumb shit. Yeah. So to have some respons take some responsibility. We are not a victim to our circumstances. So you know what? You want to lift weights? Man, go lift weights. Don't try to do too much and, and, and try to... 
you know, do weighted dips and blow your shoulder out. In yeah. my opinion, nothing beats plyo and calisthenics, right? Yeah. I'm actually like way more nimble and agile than I look, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a big, I eat a lot and, I, you know, and I'm nimble, you know, but I, I work out very consistently. I can do weighted pull-ups, I can do clap push-ups, I can do weighted wow. dips. I can do stuff that it doesn't look like I can do. And if I were to be extremely strict, which I'm thinking about going back to being, because I used yeah. to be, to, to just get an aesthetic that is a little more appealing to the world, I guess, but just because it's bad to have fat on you. Right. So forget yeah. the aesthetics. It's unhealthy to have fat. Absolutely. I mean, I'd probably be able to do a very good amount of pull-ups and push-ups and dips and all that jazz. But anyways, tips to, 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 to summarize, man, plyo and calisthenics, push-ups, pull-ups, dips and sit-ups sit and you can never go wrong absolutely there's an 80 year old dude at the gym he walks in there shoulders are back uh, back is straight chest is out great posture you can tell he's old by his face and his hair yeah but his posture you're like oh damn it makes you want to stand up straighter yeah. he takes the little stool he walks over puts it down steps up he reaches up to grab the chin-up bar. Yeah. This is an 80 year old man. That's insane. Okay? Yeah. Chin-up bar. Yeah. He holds it, because he's not that short. He's like, you know, everyone's taller than me. I'm not a tall dude. So he stands up and he, he reaches it on the little step stool. Yeah. Right? This is 80 years old, my dude. And everyone stops what they're doing and watches him. He's holding it. He lifts his legs up yeah. to 90 degrees and just starts doing chin-ups. Wow. With his legs at 90 80. degrees. Just wow. doing chin-ups, perfect, slow, controlled, like this, all the way to the chin, yeah. all the way down. And if someone asked him, where does that come from? And he's like, dude, I was an army ranger, <laughs> and, you know, 60 years ago? Yeah. 60, 60 years ago, when he was, he was 20, in the military, yeah. when he was 20 years old. He's like, we didn't have any of these machines. We had nothing. We did push-ups, pull-ups, dips, sit-ups, and we ran. Wow. He's all, and that works. And he's, I mean, there's an example of health. Yeah. You can snatch and cling and clean and jerk and deadlift and power lift all you want that man's 80 years old and he is healthy mm -hmm. i don't think that you're going to be healthy doing that if you do that for 60 years yeah you're gonna blow something out and people <laughs> do all the time oh yeah so keep it simple man just eat better first that's, first and that's foremost the, yeah that's a you have one. to control what you eat. Yeah. I mean, I know that it might be weird for everyone looking at me. I'm a big dude. Uh, you should see what I can do. <laughs> and if I get focused, which I'm actually getting back in, like I said, I enjoyed 2017 immensely. Yeah. And I'm going to enjoy 2018, but I'm going to be a little bit more a regimented, bit, regimented yeah, yeah. about the way I eat. You yeah, know? makes sense. So, um, but th that's what I say to everyone. It's all about what you eat and drink. Mm -hmm. You clean up what you eat and drink first and watch what happens to your body. Mm -hmm. You combine that with just a decent amount of basic exercise. Don't even go to the gym, man. Get pull a bar in your garage or the ones that are in the doorway and just try to do pull-ups push-ups and that mix with, eat, with eating right yes and sit-ups and, and just stretch and go swimming dude Done. you'll clean up quick yeah so dude what's a typical day like for you <laughs> uh it just depends man yeah. um it just depends uh uh usually i get up early yeah and i uh uh, I'll go uh, get a workout in. Yeah. Um, if I don't do that, I'll go and, and work yeah. early mm -hmm. so I can finish early. Yeah. Go to work early, finish early, then get the gym in. Um, I have family uh, that I need to take care of. Um, I might go sit at a Starbucks and just set up shop and um, uh, write f uh, an article yeah. I'm doing for a magazine, set an itinerary, uh, respond to emails. Um, uh, plan out my next trip because I travel so much. Absolutely. So I kind of get everything lined up yep. and have all of my responsibilities for the event that I'm a part of. Yeah. Uh, various uh, things like that, man. Yeah. So on, um, there isn't really so much of a typical day yeah. in the sense of wake up. And I'm sure that keeps you like on your toes and it's exciting. It. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, there isn't really like an eight to five. Yeah. So I don't have to get up at 6.30, shower, leave the house by 7.15 yeah. to make sure you get to the parking lot by 10 till 8, get in, clock in, cubicle till 5, sit in traffic to go home, and then if I'm not too exhausted, try to go to the gym, yeah. which is what is the majority of people's right. kind of steeze. Yeah. So I don't really have it like that, but I make my schedule to be fairly consistent because habits are good. Mm -hmm. So consistent regiments, habits, it helps get things done. If, yeah. you're, free, if you're freelancing every day, if you're just kind of playing it by ear every day, unless you have extreme focus, you get you'll you won't get as much done. Yeah, you gotta you gotta focus. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Man. So the days vary, man. The yeah. days vary. That's good, dude. That's awesome. I'm sure. You're, I'm sure it's like you know, like I said, it keeps things exciting. And I mean, I do fresh. have a day. I do yeah. have a day gig. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so, but I I have the ability to create my own schedule. 
I'm autonomous yeah. and that took years to get oh, there absolutely. and now that I have that ability I'm able to juggle everything and I literally juggle it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, where I live in Southern California compared to where uh, Rye Wire is, yeah. is about uh, 40 minutes. Okay. And then where the day gig is or where I might be doing something, yeah. it usually generally puts me farther away. Okay. So like, let's say I'm working on a car at Rye Wire. If I leave from one of my jobs, I'll leave and it's an hour and 10 minute drive. So that's an hour and 10 minutes there and 40 minutes. That's two hours of that day that has nothing going on except driving. Wow. Okay. So if I do four or five, six hours of one job and I put two or three hours to another and then go to Rywire to work on a car, yeah. I mean, that's a 12, 15 hour day. Yeah. I still need to sleep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got I still need have to go to, to the gym. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, as I've gotten older, man, I cannot function off a few hours of sleep. It's tough. I mean, not I remember a young days, oh, it's easy, not yeah. anymore. Yeah. No, no, no. It's not that easy, man. It hurts. Like, uh, my body hurts. Yeah. And it's I want it's to sleep. sad to, be, to think about, like, when we were all younger, like what you could get exactly, away with. Exactly, man. Dude, the T, like the TE staff is all here from the East Coast, right? Yeah. And last night, instead of going to dinner, enjoying, and I wanted to be with everyone, yeah. I, I chose to drive home and go to sleep <laughs> because I have things to do today. Yeah. I have the honor of doing this podcast. I'm also my day job, yeah. other personal stuff. So you just, man, you got to get it done. You yeah. have to get shit done and you have to stop talking about how you don't have enough time. And you know what, honestly, man, work harder. Yeah. Try harder. I haven't been able to do this. Man, you better try harder. <laughs> yeah. um, what's wrong with you, man? I'm tired of people, man. Like, if you haven't driven home and slept in your car because you literally would rather go to sleep than go inside, you're not that tired. Yeah. You, Come you on, man. Do it. You're not that tired. <laughs> yeah. Nah, man. Yeah. Work harder. That's what I tell everyone. Yeah. Try harder. Cool, man. Grind harder. So uh, what what advice do you have for someone who's just now getting in the car in the car scene and looking to like start building cars? Okay, biggest piece of advice yep. is develop a vision. Yep. Whether you copy it, I don't care. I don't care if you see a car in a magazine, a website, a vlog, a blog, whatever. You have an idea, or you put those t together, a bunch of them, and you have this idea. Create the vision of what you want your car to look like and do. Yeah. Okay. Then, then once you are one hundred percent sure this is what I want to create. Then uh, you need to take a list and create a list, bullet list of every part needed to make that vision. And then you need to find the price of every part needed to make that vision. And then you take all that together and you add it up. Basic math, add it together. When you look at the final number, if your current financial situation does not allow for you to do that in a, fee, in a time frame that you decide is acceptable. Now that's where it's great. Yeah. If it takes if it takes you six months of saving, some people can do that. If if you make minimum wage and you're trying to modify a car and you see that number and you're like, it would take me years. Well, guess what? It's gonna take you years. But you know what? People do not have the fucking testicular fortitude to wait it out. Mm -hmm. What they no do patience. is. They don't have patience, right? And I get that because the world is going, going, and you look at Instagram and every day someone's got a new mod and you can't live by the Joneses, man. So you take your vision, you price out and list out everything needed to create your vision, yep. and you go about doing that vision. If the number total, which is the reality of life, it, it costs money. Yeah. If that reality of life is that number is a number that you cannot afford, that means that A, you need to save up longer, and accept that it will take you longer to build your vision or you need to be put that vision aside and go make more money because you know what guys that's what it is mm -hmm. this is not a hobby that you make money doing this is a, a passion and a culture and you are going to spend your money yep. so if you can't afford your vision don't don't sacrifice the vision don't Pick fake wheels because they look the same. Don't do a shitty ass paint job because a quality one's more. Or don't the do homie that. Hooked it up or yeah, something. don't do that. Yeah. If you have a vision, don't settle for anything less. And if you cannot wait, that's a personal problem that yeah. I can't help you with. <laughs> Those are some good words, man. That's the reality, man. Map it out. And if you look at a number and says to build this car will cost me thirty thousand dollars right and you make thirty five thousand dollars a year you literally cannot afford to build your car <laughs> which possible. means you need to go and go back to school double, start a triple, business yeah. go make more money get a side job if you don't have three jobs then you're you could work harder mm -hmm. if you're sleeping if you sleep eight hours a night 
then you could work more. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a matter of perspective. I mean, dude, there are ways to make money that don't involve physical labor, mm -hmm. okay? And I don't mean the lottery and, 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 and stocks and bonds necessarily, but, you know, start a business, you know? Sell start stuff business. off to the side. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, if you, if you are trying to build a car and you have on uh, retro Jordans, okay? And um, a whatever, let's say a Supreme tea, yeah. right? You got quality clothing on, right? And you're like, I can't afford to build my car you have to reassess your priorities yeah. okay if you have kids uh you need to be focusing on your kids <laughs> not on your clothing and on your cars Agreed. okay so um and i'm not maybe you're able to do both but i'm 100 percent sure because i know how to do basic math yeah. that if you are within a certain demographic of people and you make a certain amount of money if you are wearing that and you also feed your kids you don't have any money left to do your <laughs> yeah own. that's tough unless you're gonna get yourself in credit card debt which you'll spend 20 years getting out of and i was a younger man i made all kind of mistakes i'm saying this because i learned yeah okay that's good advice. so that's what i tell everyone develop your vision find out how much it costs and that number right there will tell you if a you can do your vision or b how hard it will be mm -hmm. to make your vision a reality and the rest of that is uh, what kind of man you are yeah man there it is good words dude dude i think that's a that's a good good uh, place to just like kind of end it man so okay. like i'm out of questions uh do you have any like closing thoughts or like shout outs uh before we end this thing you know what man i think uh kind of what we ended up segueing to right there at the end yeah. that would be sort of what i would have ended up doing uh you know what guys it takes years um i'm 35 years old you know i got into it uh you know it depends on how you want to start saying where, where's your starting point yeah. i was a kid that would go to the grocery store and grab a magazine and just read it uh, super street import tuner honda tuning turbo magazine sport compact car all of them right M almost none of those exist anymore except super street yeah. but i would i'm just saying like i would i would look at that i was 14 15 years old right is that when i started being a part of it maybe right that's when i started getting inspiration when i was younger than that kicking it with older heads and their old big homies and their gangster homies and they're that were driving x y and z cars that is that where it started who knows right yeah. my first car i got in 2000 and that's 18 years ago man. <laughs> some of these kids are 18 and they're like how come nobody want likes my car man I've been in it as long as you've been alive. alive yeah. And as long as I've been it, there's someone who's in it a decade longer than me, and that's who I looked up to. You know, so take your time, man. Stop being an impatient little kid. Stop being, you don't like it. You have to accept the fact that you're being an impatient child. You have to take your time, earn your stripes, and spend your money. Build something that is worth you presenting to a company and saying, this is what I built before. This is what I want at an event, or this is whatever. Yeah. And I, this is why I feel that I'm worthy of a sponsorship. And if that's what your goal is, to be sponsored. Um, or if you just want to do you, then do you. Build what you want. And don't don't get mad when people don't like it. Because it, it's going to happen. If no it's for what. you, yeah. then why are you mad when someone else doesn't like it? Yeah. You, people need to stop being so sensitive, man. Just do you. And if other people like it, cool. If they don't like it, cool, cool. <laughs> right? And that's not something overnight. It takes time to train yourself as a, as a, as a person, as a man, to, to be able to, to take criticism mm -hmm. um, and, and, and be able to accept it with grace and with, with um, maturity, yeah. you know? So I think that's what everyone is. You know, for all of you guys, man, just take your time. Build what you want. Don't build what, what is cool to everyone else necessarily. Don't rush it. Take your time. No fake wheels. <laughs> Don't support companies that knock off other companies. Yeah. If it's a company that no one's ever heard of and it's its own design, that's not what that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, if it's a, if it's a company that just makes wheels, I don't care. Yeah. That's a company that this they put themselves out there just like the real company did before. If you want the real company, but <laughs> well, I'm referring to simply the fact that if it's a design that is knocked off you should not support that if it, is a, if it is a company that just makes wheels then they're wheels if yeah. that's what you want cool but if it is a design that is being ripped off of another company that made that design popular then do not try to justify to yourself or to anyone else that it's okay to buy that because it's not mm -hmm. it's not ethically and it's not 
uh, business-wise mm-hmm. is not acceptable, is not okay. Don't try to convince yourself or everyone else. If it's just a company that makes wheels and you like the wheel design, no one's heard of it, then that's different. I think people somehow confuse a, n- a no-name wheels yeah. or unknown wheels, maybe unknown's better, yeah. to brand name, to fake versus real. Mm-hmm. I think fake is sort of this broader category where it's like, well, I've never heard of you so know, it must be fake. Yeah, it it's must be fake. But no, if that design is their own design, that's not fake. Yeah. It's just a company that no one else has heard of. But yeah. no one would have heard of 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 raised wheels if you go back far enough. Mm-hmm. They started. Yeah, they were but, new at some point. Yeah. Exactly. But they they went and created designs that have become timeless and classic and forging processes that are the standard and now they are the benchmark. And they earned that. Yep. And so some other company makes a TE knockoff or a CE knockoff and sells it it's and you buy it and you all. try to act like it's okay. It's not okay. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't rock that XYZ company uh, and support them, but if they're knocking off other people's stuff, just be a man and admit that that's a knockoff. Yeah. Don't, But don't try to make it seem like it's okay. So that's all I say, everyone. Take your time, be patient, be willing to work hard. If you got to get a second job to fund your, your hobby, there's nothing wrong with then that. Then go get a second job, man. And you and it's hard to do that if you're cranking out kids at the same time. Yeah. It's a sensitive subject, man, but don't be cranking out kids and trying to crank out car <laughs> bills. I don't know what you do for a living, but I couldn't have 3 kids That'd be tough. and be and be in designer gear <laughs> and build a car. Like what do you do for a living <laughs> other than swipe out a, a credit card? Yeah. Because I don't know how you do that. That'd be tough. You know, I have I have, I have more than one career and I'm not doing that. So I don't know how you're doing that. Yeah. And and I see kids doing it all the time. And I don't I'm just get like, it. Well, who are you? Yeah. Like, what do you do? Because that does not monetarily add up. <laughs> so, you know, you guys, everyone, you know, social media, it makes you want to fit a, 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 a style and a norm and keep up with the Joneses yeah. and always. And I get that. I get it. If every time you look at your phone or go to a show, people are, are doing things, you don't know what they're doing. You don't know if they're swiping away or if their parents buy it for them. It doesn't, and it doesn't matter. That's not your business. Your business is you. Yeah. And you need to do what's best for you. Don't go into debt trying to keep up with what's in style. Mm-hmm. Not for your shoes, not for your clothes, not for your, uh, not for your car. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's in, in the grand scheme, you know, you have to, there's a balance. Life's all about balance. Mm-hmm. So you got to try setting to, priorities and all that. Yeah, setting priorities. That's what makes you an adult, man. Mm-hmm. So uh, take your time and you'll earn respect. Um, it took me, you know, I've been in it 18 plus years uh-huh. and um, not, not eight, 18, yeah. you know, and there are guys and who some are, kids are 18 years and old, 18 <laughs> years old, you know, so there's, you got to put it in perspective. And like I said, people came before me. Um, and um, you know you just have to be willing to accept and give and give respect and uh, and do you and not worry about what other people say and uh, and just go from there man and uh, let's all grow together you know absolutely you, on the street side and then on the industry side you know uh, you got people like myself doing it to break down stereotypes and represent our culture and our community on a very grand scale um, and then that will trickle down then to you yeah. if I try to break a stereotype and then they go and see you perpetuating that stereotype well thanks yeah right we're just fucking each other right <laughs> so you have to just be understand your part of a whole yep you know um and uh the balance of knowing that you're part of a whole and doing you is the fun part of life mm-hmm. You know, being a good citizen for the country that you're a citizen of uh, is, a, is the concept of being part of a bigger whole. Um, your family, you're part of your family, right? But you're also you. Yep. That balance is what makes the world go round. Mm-hmm. That I, just, I know that got real, real deep for a second, <laughs> but I'm serious, man. Yeah. Whether it be the citizenship of the country that you reside in, whether it be your family, your car crew, the way you think, being you and having respect for the whole is what's disappearing Mm -hmm. and i think that balance is very vital to everything absolutely man so i'll end with that good words man dude uh, i just wanted to take a moment again to say thank you for uh doing this with me and uh, i just wanted to say like congratulations on like all your success uh i appreciate it a true og man i appreciate been been doing this for a while and it's it's been it's been fun thank you thank you for having me yeah of course man so uh, this has been How It's Done Podcast with Christian Loza. And uh, yeah, this has been Big Mike. Thanks, man. Salute. Peace. That was fun. That was long. Dude, that was fun. Was that like three hours or two, 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 two hours and a minute. We beat Mike's.
Yo, I...